Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for bearing with us, um, and apologies for the late start. Just experiencing some technical issues. Um, hopefully we're all up and running now, so you should be able to see Lawn 4. Uh, we're currently watching Will G playing for England against Spain's top seed Manuel Alvarez Sala. Manuel has taken the opportunity to build a 5-2 lead here. And he's now taking on a shot at hoop 8. Which he runs very confidently. So a 6-2 lead now for Spain over here on lawn 4. So for those of you who were watching yesterday, um, you may know that Spain have managed to build a 4-2 match score lead against England. Um, and I have to say, from the games that I watched and played in, um, they absolutely deserve that lead. Uh, they've been playing very well so far this test match. The only two doubles games that England were able to pick up was uh, Will G and JP Mobley against Basilio and Pedro and myself and Stu against Manuel and Andres. The schedule for today is three rounds of four singles matches, so a total of 12 matches on offer today. We will be sticking here on lawn four throughout the day, so hopefully you'll be able to watch a few of the different players rotating around. So on lawn three, we currently have JP Mobley, the England captain, playing Jose Alvarez Sala. Uh, he is 3 2 up in that first game. Over on lawn two, uh, slightly further down, we have Richard Bilton against Basilio Inglesias. Uh, I believe Basilio has a 6 2 lead in that match. And all the way down, on Lawn 1, we have Stephen Molinar of England playing Pedro Lozano. Um, it's difficult for me to see that score, but I believe Stephen has taken the first game 7-3, and they're at Hoop 1 in the second game. So, returning to our featured match here. Oh, that's a great shot from Manuel. Uh, clearing red from about 21 yards there. Will will definitely be up against it to win this first game. 6-2 uh, down at the moment. But at the very least, you would hope he can score a couple more hoops, just build up his confidence uh, to take it into game two. And a second 21 yard shot there, not quite coming off for Manuel. So, Will with a three foot hoop here. Um, I'll try and take advantage of this nice position to run it all the way down to ten. Uh, 
Okay, well he's scored the hoop, um, but it has strayed all the way down to the north boundary. Uh, pretty much straight in line with hoop 10 there, so it should be relatively easy for Manuel to find a wired spot here from yellow. Very deep, actually. Um, hard to tell whether he is wired from yellow, but even if he isn't, I'm not sure Will will necessarily want to take on that clearance anyway.
Okay, so we've just relocated our second camera down into corner two to give you a slightly better view of this Hoot 10. Um, it's not looking great for Will here with blue in the jaws. Um, yellow over at Hoot 2 is going to struggle to get that back out. So just assessing here whether he wants to take on a jump shot. You may well be right, Toby. Um, so if Blue's come through the back, uh, yep, it has, you're right. Uh, thank you for that correction. Uh, just trying to manage all the equipment here, so I uh, took my eyes off the ball, but uh, yes, indeed. So Blue now playing through to the right side of the hoop. And we'll, may look to line up a clearance here. I think he's going up black. Very nice confident strike there. It would have been nice to catch that a little bit more on the left hand side to shift it further south just to make Black's return clearance at yellow slightly longer. Um, but all the same, puts the pressure back onto Manuel. This looks to be a little jump shot from Will here, quite close range. Uh, that's very nice, gets up and over blue through the hoop. So the score now 6 4 to Manuel. Uh, Will having pulled back the last couple of hoops from 6 2 down. Over in JP Mobley's game, uh, the score is 4-all against Jose alvarez Sala. Richard Bilton is 6-5 down in his match on Lawn 2 against Basilio. And I believe Stephen Mulliner is currently tied at 2-all with Pedro over on court 4. Returning to Hoop 11 in our featured game then, um, red doesn't have hoop running positions so yellow will look for a slightly more controlled clearance here on blue. Red was in position then all that matters is shifting blue but uh, here it's important that yellow hangs around a little bit more. And he's gone at that hard just to ensure that Blue's moved. Um, he has lost yellow, so probably have another long clearance to make uh, on the next rotation of the balls. Uh, but the main objective of moving Blue uh, has been achieved there. So it turns out Will thinks he can run this hoop. Um, he's going to give it a go at least. Uh, no, 
that was a difficult angle. It was possible and probably worth the shot at that stage, uh, but it hasn't come off. So, slightly easier hoop run here for Manuel to take the first game. Okay, so Manuel taking the first game here against Will G um, with a score of 7-4. Uh, we will hopefully be resuming with game two shortly. For those of you who were watching yesterday, um, the pace of the doubles was rather slow. Uh, players are perfectly entitled to take time to discuss with their partner what shot they'd like to take. Um, but the joy of singles is that the pace is a little bit faster, so uh, hopefully that will make for better viewing for you all today. Meanwhile, over on Lawn 3, Spain have also taken the first game there, um, with Basilio taking Richard Bilton to 13 and winning it 7-6. JP Mobley has established a 5-4 lead on Lawn 3 against Jose Alvarez Sala, and Stephen is 3-2 up against Pedro at the far end on Lawn 1. So I'm going to go and quickly have a chat with the cameraman to see if we can get a view of some of those other lawns um, whilst our game here on Lawn 4 is taking its intermission. Okay, so we now have a view of the England captain, JP Mobley, directly in front of the camera, with Stephen and Pedro uh, down in the background. Will and Manuel now making their way back towards corner four, so our game here should be resuming shortly.
So, back in action here on lawn four. Will has put yellow into excellent two yard position in front of hoop one. Manuel took a shot at it with his first ball and missed, so he will be having another shot at it shortly. Close again, but missing just to the right-hand side that time. So Will now with a no-pressure two-yard hoop shot. Yep, it's a great shot. So it runs it all the way down to the north boundary, uh, takes an early 1-0 lead in game two. Blue's just a little bit short of where he would have liked it, uh, so it is open on yellow. Red here will just play in to nice tight position. run on about two feet too far. Black there also dribbling past the hoop, so only one ball in front out of three positional attempts to get up to hoop two. Will playing for the promotion on red there. Uh, looks like yellow's flicked off and blocked blue at the hoop. So a uh, very good result there for Will. So Chris Clark is uh, suggesting that a lot of club players might be wondering why Will ran hoop one all the way down to the north boundary uh, instead of trying to finish in front of hoop two. Um, I think we've seen a lot of the England players in particular uh, fail on some of their hoop shots uh, so far this test match, so just making sure you guarantee the hoop and run it at a comfortable pace, which for Will is relatively hard, uh, is the more important part. Uh, we may well see more controlled hoop attempts uh, once the players become a little bit more comfortable uh, with their hoop running. And as Toby says, even if you do go off the north boundary, providing your opponent doesn't find a wide position, you will only have a nine yard return roque, um, which these players would expect to hit the majority of the time. Manuel opting to let Will have this hoop attempt. Um, it's probably about six or seven yards back at a slight 10 degree angle, so by no means easy. Oh, 
great shot. And that'll do a lot for his confidence now to take an early 2-0 lead in this second game. It's a very good response from Manuel. Uh, it's a lovely position about one yard north of hoop three. Just slightly out of view on your camera at the moment. Uh, so. Will missing his first shot at it and going halfway down onto JP's lawn there. Who's played in a little bit close to black. Can't quite tell from here whether it will hamper black's backswing at all if it wants to take its hoop shot. Also looks like a bit of a double here for Will, um, with red, although I think he'll be aiming to take out black. Okay, so clearly blue is hampering black's swing at the hoop there. Will just opting to play a ball in. Black here can look to block yellow shot at blue and then run the hoop with blue with its next shot. Should be a relatively easy block from where he is. Judging by Will's reaction, he looks to have got the block there, so Will now faced with a difficult double clearance, black onto blue, or playing into position trying to block blue at the hoop. And that's what he's opted for. He looks to have gone behind blue there, so maybe just trying to get on its backswing again, but uh, just straying a little bit too far. So Manuel runs that to bring the score back to 2-1. Will still with the lead. And that looks to be a little bit of an angle in front of four, but uh, only about two feet away, so I'd expect that that will run. Manuel just taking a look at it to inform his next couple of shots. Does it require shooting at red? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there, Ewan and Toby. Um, Will's uh, shot choice at hoop three uh, is beyond my tactical understanding too. Uh, 
so we don't have an official speed on the lawns, Chris. Um, that might be worth doing, so we'll see if I can get that sorted for you later in the day. Uh, they are playing quite quickly uh, after a period of warm weather for the past few days. That's an unfortunate shot there from Manuel, uh, attempting to clear red. Uh, he hit it, but straight into hoop four. So red now should be able to run this hoop. Um, potentially just looking for the jaws if running it isn't possible. So just tapping it into the jaws there. Blue is behind the hoop, so may have the opportunity to move red. It's hard to see whether black's in the way of yellow's jump, uh, or yellow's in the way of black's jump attempt. Um, I think it might just about be hampering black's backswing. Uh, if it is, black will just opt to stop sh hop yellow out the way and take his clearance back through the hoop with blue at red. Okay, so not a stop shot. He's played off the side of that. Uh, perhaps the ball's a little bit too close together to play the stop shot there without the risk of a double tap. Will opting to try and peel red there, uh, shooting at it with yellow, missing by a little bit to the right-hand side. So blue will now have this return shot to get yellow out of the jaws. Also misses completely. So, well, now we'll just tap red through so that it remains as close to hoop five as possible for the clearance there. And this will take him 3 1 up in the second game. For those of you watching JP's game in the background, he is 6-5 up, uh, with a little bit of control here at hoop 12, so I will bring you the result of that uh, when they finish. Okay, apologies for the break in commentary there. Uh, just a quick discussion regarding the live stream. So, Will has hit that clearance on Black. Uh, Black now facing a 16 yard return at yellow. Okay, so Will will take this two yard hoop shot at five for a 
relatively comfortable 4-1 lead if he gets it. Yep, good shot. So, 4-1 to Will. I can now bring you the result of JP's game. Uh, he won 7-5 against Jose on Lawn 3. Further down on Lawn 2, uh, England currently has a 3-0 lead in the second game, uh, having lost the first game 7-6. Uh, that's Richard Bilton against Basilio Inglesias. And they're just changing the scores over at the moment on Lawn 1, but I will bring that to you shortly. One game more. One game more? Or 2-0? Stephen Mullen has won. Okay, so Stephen Mullner appears to have won that in two games. Uh, relatively quick match, that one. So um, good to get another match for England. Brings the total test score to 4-2, Spain still winning. 4-3. Uh, 4-3 now, thank you. Uh. So I've just been informed by uh, Francis, our tournament referee, that uh, this match is being live streamed at Roehampton so uh, thank you very much everyone there for watching uh, I believe you have your own tournament going on as well so uh, it's very kind of you to tune in and watch some of this Okay, so Will with another hoop opportunity here, um, two yards in front of hoop six. Uh, outside of the left-hand wire. So Black can now opt to have a free hoop attempt, uh, or if he's feeling a little bit more cautious, he could just play in to better position. Uh, Will's yellow is down in corner four, and his red over in corner two. So, opting for the positional shot and leaving Will two lengthy clearances um, would be a reasonable choice if he's not feeling confident to take the hoop. Looks as though he's going for the hoop here, so that's good to see. And it hasn't paid off, but that's a nice enough rejection um, that he's still well in the vicinity of hoop six. So yellow playing in quite close to black there, um, you'd expect that to be cleared with ease and a nice stop shot from black uh, if red doesn't do anything to stop it. So we'll see what Will's plan is here. lining up the clearance on black here. Yep, that's a good shot. So he didn't catch very much of that black there, but uh, he's hit it hard enough that it shifted all the way down over to the east boundary. Um, so uh, 14 yard return here for Jose. And surprisingly it seems to have started raining, um, which after yesterday's weather 
Uh, it's a nice change. Manuel taking cover under the tent while Will has this hoop shot for a 5-1 lead. Okay, just to pause there, we're um, looking to get our second camera out of the rain, so we've switched you over here. Uh, Will's hoop shot failing, so Manuel having a shot, also not running, and quite a big rejection there over towards the east boundary. As Toby says, the unfortunate effect of the rain is that it will slow the lawns down a little bit, uh, making positional shots slightly easier to play. Uh, always nice to have fast lawns for a top-level event like this. Will there just opting for the safety clearance on black, um, expecting that if blue does clear red, he doesn't want black left in front of the hoop. anyway so hopefully uh, with another hoop attempt here uh, this one will run from about a yard straight in front we'll just firming up the hoop a little bit there uh, they have had quite a few hacks at it and there we go nice and easy 5-1 to Will G. So our second camera now, hiding under the shelter of one of the large trees here at Hurlingham, uh, protected from the rain, so we've switched you back to that view there for Hoop 7. And Will's positional shot there with yellow has blocked black at the hoop. Um, wouldn't necessarily help, given black can just stop shot it away if it's left where it is. Blue, though, hasn't got very nice position, so it takes the pressure off Will here just a little bit. JP and Jose seem to have 
decided that they're just going to wait out the rain under the marquee for a little bit longer before they get back on, but uh, I will continue updating you with their game when they resume. Will here a little bit indecisive over what to do. Um, if blue does run, then uh, clearing black won't help. Uh, wherever you clear it to, it can send yellow in lawn. So he's just opting to play in position. Um, maybe that was a block attempt on black. Um, can't quite tell what he was going for there. Black now with a nice stop shot on yellow. Plays it well, drifts on towards the hoop. It's a little unfortunate, yellow going into the back of hoop 7. This will allow Manuel to simply put blue in front, uh, with both balls in front and nothing yellow can do about them. So the only explanation I have for the position of red is that Will may have determined it was safer just to put it towards the corner where it couldn't be cleared anywhere, um, but if you're going to do that I'd much prefer to put it off the boundary in front of the hoop so you at least get a seven yard hoop shot. Um, so yeah, I'm really not quite sure what that shot with red was earlier. Might have been going for blue there. Um, hasn't quite come off. So, black here can just play close to the hoop. Again, nothing yellow can do about either ball being glued to the back of the wire. Ewan suggesting the jump. Uh, that might have been nice if he gets it cleanly. Uh, with yellow stuck to the back of the hoop, it won't have an approach down towards hoop 8. Um, but Manuel opting for the safer play of just putting a ball in, guaranteeing an easy jump later on. The rain really is coming down quite heavy now. Uh, JP still hiding out. Uh, oh no, no, he has emerged into corner four on court three. Uh, but he's now walking off again, so. Good news is we've found an umbrella to uh, cover our second camera out there in the rain, so we can continue to bring you this view at Hoop 7. Bit of a long shot there, red at black, uh, not working out, so a simple one foot hoop for black here. He'll aim to run this nicely down in front of eight. Just past level with the peg, so not ideal, but um, still gives him a little bit more control for the next hoop.
good positional shot there from Will. Um, less than a yard away from Hupe. Red there looking to block black at yellow, just going a little bit too far. May have offered the opportunity for a double clearance here. Which he gets, very nice shot there from Manuel. And he's cleared it, but uh, yellow has disappeared all the way back to the north boundary. So, provided blue can retake position, uh, Will will be faced with another couple of long clearances before he gets a reasonable hoop shot here. straight back in front of the hoop, so Will with some more work to do. Uh, that was a more controlled clearance attempt, uh, red at blue. Uh, unfortunately, just focusing on controlling the pace there uh, perhaps meant that he lost a little bit of accuracy and he's just slid past on the right-hand side. here looks to have a pretty big target with uh, blue to the right of the hoop, black to the left. Either blue or the hoop would be a good result. Uh, black would be better than nothing. But, uh, with blue to play next, uh, you'd expect Manuel to be running that if it remains where it is. Okay, so he's got black. Um, puts a little bit more pressure on his hoop shot, but he is only one yard away straight in front. And that goes through. So, 3-5 now from Manuel's perspective. Will here with a difficult approach over to 9. He's a couple of yards north of the western penalty area. And that's not a bad effort from where he was, uh, just a little bit further than he would have liked.
So we're black in deep position. There's not a lot that red can do about it. We might opt here just to clear blue. Uh, put a bit of pressure on black to decide whether to clear yellow or take its hoop. And that's a good shot. Yellow doesn't look to have the nicest hoop position, so Manuel here opting to have a go at hoop 9. Yep, that's a lovely shot. So after being 5-1 down, he's now brought it back to Chris Clark there saying that uh, top players should be able to take position at any hoop from any distance on a lawn of this quality. Uh, the quality of the lawn does make uh, consistent positional play easier, um, but as we've said, they are playing reasonably fast, so um, positional play is by no means as easy as these players will likely make it look. Uh, meanwhile, that's a terrific shot from Manuel to run hoop 10. Uh, he's now brought the scores level at 5 all. And that's not ideal from blue there going to give black a little bit more to think about on the clearance at yellow, um, with blue now on its left hand side of the shot. does look as though he's still going for this clearance. Uh, that's a very nice shot there. Moving yellow without getting any contact on blue. Um, may even have sent it close to wide position from blue. Uh, can't tell from my angle in the commentary tent, but from Will's response, it looks as if there must be a bit of furniture in the way.
and he's still looking at this shot, so perhaps he can see a little bit of it. Um, he certainly doesn't have much, if anything. So just opting to go back to halfway there, uh, accepting that there's nothing he could really do about blue. Very nice smooth hoop stroke there from Manuel. Runs blue down into a commanding position in front of 12. As Chris and Ewan are saying in the comments, uh, this has been quite the comeback. From 5-1 down, he's now established a 6-5 lead. They're going quite far past the hoop, um, so no hoop shot on with either ball. We'll see if Will still fancies this clearance at blue, setting up the hoop for red, or whether he'd just prefer to play into position now that uh, neither of Manuel's balls are in front. He's still going for the clearance here. And that's a great shot. Centre ball all the way down to the south boundary. We've actually got a great angle from our camera here. And, oh, that's perfect. So, yellow covering blue's return at red. just coming back into the position, that's all he could really do there, um, put a little bit more pressure on Will's shot. Okay, so up towards hoop 13, score 6 all, with Manuel one game up. to be a little bit angled, but I think that's a nice positional shot up to 13. You do get a little bit of slope uh, left to right as you play up to 13 on some of the front lawns here at Hurlingham, so perhaps he opted to play a little bit further out to the left than he normally would uh, to avoid sloping off into the hoop. Terrific shot from Will. Centre ball, but hard enough that both balls have followed off the boundary.
So once again, that positional shot from Manuel looks a little bit wide, um, but it definitely still has a hoop shot on. taking slightly deep position, but uh, playing in from the south boundary, so not an easy positional shot to get tight to the hoop there. Manuel has gone to the other side of the hoop to uh, lie down and assess whether black can squeeze past red for a hoop shot. The alternative is just to stop shot right away and hold position for the hoop, uh, but that would likely concede a seven-yard hoop attempt to yellow. Looks as though he's going for the stop shot on red here. Oh. Um, perhaps that was a hoop attempt. Whatever it was, it's missed everything. So, Will here now to clear blue, setting up the hoop for red. Nice controlled shot, uh, retaining position near the hoop, near yellow. Blue will have a shorter return clearance at red, but uh, that won't trouble Will too much. Even if he does hit it, he's only moving it a yard further back to the boundary. So he's hit that, just extending Will's hoop shot uh, by an extra yard. Red still straight in front, though. Hoop shot there from Will, completely missing to the right. So, two balls now down on the south boundary. So Allison there suggesting just to take position with red uh, instead of trying the hoop. Uh, if you can take position blocking blue, uh, then that would have been quite nice. Um, but uh, if you don't get the block on blue, then you're potentially conceding the first hoop attempt to the opponent. So I think Will, have, Will will have decided that uh, taking on the hoop shot there while he had the opportunity without any of Manuel's balls too threatening uh, was a sensible choice. Uh, even if you hit the hoop and bounce back or over to the side, it's not a terrible result. Unfortunately, completely missing has sent him uh, about 28 yards away from where he wants to be. Yellow there looking to get the block on blue. Don't think he has, so 
this might well just be tighter position from blue looking for black at yellow in a minute's time. can't quite see that on our camera at the moment, but that's getting applause, so it may well be that red is now blocking black at yellow. If it is, then that's an absolutely brilliant shot. Manuel here, back to the other side of the hoop, once again lying down to try and see if he can squeeze past it all. If red is covering black, and uh, he will give the jump a go. The jump either clearing yellow or running the hoop. Both would be a perfectly good result. He doesn't quite seem sure whether black can fit past red, so going a little bit further back now and crouching down to see if that view can give him the answer he needs. A couple more press-ups now, just out of view. Just finding the best camera angle for you there. So he's playing the jump. And that's a good result, clearing yellow. Very nice shot. So Toby there saying in the comments, uh, if you're in doubt as to whether you can or cannot see a ball, um, just getting in the air um, gives you a bit more confidence that you will be able to hit it. If you're hesitating whether you have enough space to slide past and hit it, you're probably either going to pull it out wide or collide with the ball that's covering. So playing the jump shot there, a good choice and brilliant execution. Will's return clearance just going into the back of the hoop. Hard to tell how much blue he could actually see there. So Manuel with a one yard hoop 13 to take the match 2-0. And he runs it. Very well played indeed. So, to bring you up to speed on a couple of the other games, uh, JP took the first game of his match 7-5. He's now 3-1 down in the second game. Uh, over in Richard Bilton's match, the games are tied. Uh, Richard lost the first 7-6 and won the second by a more convincing 7-3. Uh, reminder that Richard is playing Basilio. And Stephen um, 
beat Pedro Lozano in two games over on Lawn 1. So, the next game in action on Lawn 4 will be myself against Jose Alvarez Sala, uh, the Spanish team's captain. Uh, so, I am going to head off and prepare for that, uh, and I will leave you with a view over onto Court 3 for JP Mobley against Jose Alvarez Sala. Hi everybody, uh, this is Stephen Allen here from Hurlingham. Just a really big thank you to Aston for spending his morning doing some terrific commentary. Uh, wishing him all the best for his match. That'll be here on Lawn 4 very shortly and we'll be covering that on the live stream. Hope you're enjoying the show. So to keep the action going, we're going to move across to Lawn 3, cover that game over there, and uh, as soon as the action on Lawn 4 starts, we'll come back to Lawn 4.
Welcome back everybody. Coverage resuming on Lawn 4. Lawn 4 is Stuart Smith against Pedro Lozano. It was going to be featuring Aston Wade, as we mentioned earlier. He will be rescheduled to play Jose on another lawn. We're looking to get some further expert commentary for you. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'll leave the, the stream on and add any colour commentary that might be of use. So we sort out what's happening at Hoop 2. A quick shot there of our cameraman, our roaming cameraman, Martin, talking to Tony Bingham, both Hurlingham members, taking you back to the action. Smoothly done from Stuart there. That takes England two hoops to love. Ah, we have an expert who's entered the 
the commentary box in the form of Stephen Balladan. Very big welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much. I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Well, we've got second round of singles match, the second set of four of today, between Stuart Smith of England and Pedro Lozano, a, a newcomer to the Spanish team, who has been making great progress in the last couple of years, and came to Cheltenham in April this year, and I think surprised everyone by winning the event, including beating Aston Wade and James Deeth. James Deeth in the final by 2-1. So really, um, he's finding Hurlingham, I think, quite, quite, quite quick. But he's got a very smooth style and has played some very good shots indeed. And having just come off court against him an hour ago, I was quite, Im quite impressed. Um, now Stuart has his own style. He lets the weight go back on his heels so much that his toes rise and a lot of his shots are played with a distinct stop shot action. And it looks as though he's just missed the clearance after a good yellow into position, so Pedro has a chance to get a score on the board in this, the opening game. That's a bad miss. Um, and also, I don't think he played it hard enough. When you're playing an odd-numbered hoop, it's really important to try and get the ball down to the area of the fourth hoop, or the, the next even numbered hoop, and if you don't do that, you really are handing the chance to take control of the next hoop to the opponent. Now Stuart has to work out whether it's probably worth having a go at, go at this, as neither red nor yellow appear to be in position. But no, that bounced off as well. After a few attempts which haven't worked, in comes red. And that looks quite a handy shot. Here the threat is that if red isn't moved, yellow will seek to, to clear blue. And if blue can't shift red, red will have a pretty easy chance to run down to, to hoop four. So even if blue can't run the hoop, it's itself getting rid of red, and he's not trying it. Ah, oh, that was an attempt perhaps to block yellow with blue, which hasn't worked. Good job. Good example of how you can generate plenty of power despite starting slowly on the downswing. So, 21 yard clearance required. A 
luck, that looked pretty close. Another factor here is that black might be hampering red a little. It's certainly affecting the stance. Blue's so so close, you really should be able to get this down within, at the worst, four or five yards of hoop four. Well, doesn't seem to make very much of an effort to hit that with the right speed, so that gives him at least a seven or, or eight yarder to hit if black can be put into good position. a pretty good effort. I've been taking great pains not to let yellow interfere with red's attempt to clear black. though blue has gone too far to the west to make that happen so it's now say around about eight nine yard rocade to get rid of black Good job the Asserlingham courts are running around about the 12 second mark so if you hit solidly you can be sure the object wall will travel at least 10, 15, even 20 yards, and you don't have to slog at it. So it's not too obvious whether black can see yellow. very much he had a huge amount of um, yellow to look at there. So three yard hoop for Lozano to square the game at two all. No problem. And now we have the first of the pivot hoops, as I think of them. Ooh, that may have gone too far. No, nope, I think you can just about run that. Of course, what you're aiming to do as the first player to play is to be so straight in front you can hope to run through five up to just short of six. It's an even easier way of getting two hoops than when coming through hoops one or three or the other long odd numbered hoops. This in turn puts the pressure on the person who's one hoop four either to hit a good clearance or to try and run hoop four by only a yard so you shorten the shot to clear the ball in front down to about eight yards. Black will be trying to do, very difficult from this range, is really to try and block the shot, in this case from yellow to blue, but that hasn't happened. So now it's about an 11 yard clearance which Lozano has to try and clear blue. That time he misses. So the score's too all. Stuart Smith has about a four foot angled hoop from about 30 degrees and these hoops are not accepting anything other than accurate shots when you're from the angle. You've really got to miss the near upright by absolutely nothing.
and what's happening is people are only getting through by not too much. And this actually hands the initiative back to Pedro. Blue will have a very hampered shot. You really want to try and run to north of the peg so you can clear whatever ball goes into position first. And when you have blue in that situation, what uh, the player of red here is trying to do is to get wired from it by the peg just to add additional insurance. Stuart is just checking what he can do. And if he can't do anything and he can see red with black, then the right thing to do is to go for the clearance. And indeed, sometimes you get left to double with the hoop and the and the red. A bit of gardening going on. Now he must think that red cannot run from there. Well, if that's right in, if that's absolutely straight in line between red and the hoop, that's a great shot. If it's not, then it's asking either for an attempted in-off or simply a very sharp stop shot, which will send black away but keep red very close to the hoop. And Alessandro is just checking to see what his opponent can do. He looks to be in a strong position, to be honest. Uh, if he can put yellow into good running position, I don't think blue can do very much to impede him. Well, that's a strange choice of shot. It looks like a controlled clearance, and I don't know why he felt he had to do it. Um, just putting yellow a yard or two south of six would have been very strong indeed. Especially as his opponent's chances of making contact with red were not that high. That's the obvious response. And red and yellow are still very much in control of this hoop, but they've slightly opened an opportunity. If that red does not run, what black should do is to see the line between the left-hand upright of hoop six and the middle of red, and then try and drop about a yard or four feet away from the hoop so that red can't do anything to black. And I think he's work that out. So it looks to me as if red cannot run from there. Just too much. So it may be that when red comes to play we'll be able to stop shot black away. So at the moment it looks to me still advantage red and yellow. And that's the shot he should have played last time. But now he is in position. 12 yard roque for blue. No joy. I assume he was going for yellow, but uh, is being a bit more persistent now. We were hoping it was going to be a very 
sporadic shower, but it's now falling pretty vertically, so there's not much wind around. Let's hope this doesn't affect the pace of the lawns too much. It's a bit of excitement on Lawn 3. Richard Bilson lost the first game to 7-3, what was looking like losing the second game, 7-3 to Basilio Iglesias, but mounted a um, very good recovery. He is now 3-2 ahead. But on court 3 we've got John Paul Mobley, the England captain, at hoop 13 in game 2. He won the first 7-6 and now he's left Jose Abarasara, the oldest of the four brothers, who's managed to extract yellow from hoop 13. And John Paul's just insisted that he knows where blue is where to place red. And over on court four, as expected, the score is now three apiece. John Paul has just presumably blocked black at at hoop 13, so this may have to be a jump from, from Jose. He was inspecting the situation from well off the court. just run a very good hoop to square the match, 7-6, seven, 6-7. Six, six, seven. So obviously the block didn't work. Now back on court four, Stuart Smith went for the hoop and has jawsed. This leaves a relatively short jump, slight angle, for Pedro Lozano, who has demonstrated he does know how to jump. That one has obviously gone rather wrong. He's peeled blue, so it's now 4-3 to Stuart Smith. And he obviously came off the side and has ended himself well over to the east. And unfortunately, Stuart has slightly lost the opportunity to take full control of eight. He's just gone past, still very quick now. But Yellow has made a bit of a similar mistake. That's in very easy range for Stewart to clear with a stop, stop shot. He's now trying a side style hammer stroke. Obviously had very restricted, but that ball has drifted down to only five yards from the hoop. That's an interesting so he's that's a great shot. What he's tried to do, and he may have succeeded, is, as I call it, bunting or bombarding yellow forward into a wide position. I don't think he's quite succeeded. Stuart stepped up to this with no doubts. Good shot. Good classic stop shot clearance. Yellow's gone the fat part of 20 yards. Black moved about two yards, if that. This gives Blue the option of a shot where he can hit the left-hand side of red, send it to the south boundary, go over to, to hoop nine. 
bit risky if red hits black, but it's a way of turning the corner, as the Egyptians say, gaining advantage at the next hoop, even though normally you would not have that advantage. And yellow has now gone out of position, so that makes the tactic I described, the turning the corner tactic, more attractive, but we'll see what Stuart has in mind. And unfortunately, I think he was trying to do the more basic thing of just sending red a long way away, but he obviously almost missed on the right, and so he's moved red barely at all. That's a good shot, although it does leave itself open to a counter punch whereby red is firmly stop shotted away and black follows through into position. It's exactly what he tried, but unfortunately make a full enough contact so now he has rather conceded control of eight to yellow who's now going to take wide position from both blue and and black that may well be it's not wide from blue so that makes Stewart's task straightforward hit the seven and a half roque preferably under control it's gone for oh did that bad miss it may have been a very tight target. Well, that confounded by expectations, he obviously could see something with black and he duly got it. But unfortunately, blue is not in position to capitalise. Now you have the classic situation in gold croquet, two balls in front. Very difficult for the to do very much about. So what he will presumably do is to put blue into position and hoping that he can clear the other ball. So that's successfully blocking red. Red is obviously trusting that black is not going to clear yellow down to the south boundary and indeed possibly leave it wide from blue because blue is very close to the hoop. So a binary situation here. If Stuart hits this cleanly, uh, he's gone for, gone for position. Just too much. Rid of blue, all right. Oh no, he, enough, great shot for all. Stuart puts a good ball there in front of nine. Pedro knows he's ever hit that. That's red has much nearer the east boundary than the line of the hoop. About two yards south of blue would have been better. And that looks like an attempted block. Can black prevent yellow even having a shot at blue? Well, it looks quite a good attempt to me. Maybe yellow can just go past the north or left side of black and still hit blue. Great shot. So 
Now these two are very evenly matched. Very hard to say who's going to win. Indeed impossible at this stage. But that's never harmed to take position. must leave at least a jaws in for continuity of the student. Really sign. These hoops are say, very good, but they do move around a little because Hurlingham's turf is always pliable. Got it. He's, I think he'd have been happy with the jaws and indeed better to be 5-4 than 4-5, but Black won't have much of a shot up to the north, so Lozano has the chance to square things again if he can get this yellow into good position. Looks a reasonable effort. achieved its block, it's a great shot. But it can of course be easily sent to either the north or west boundaries. The north boundary is easier by yellow. And this and this red is a little short of ideal. That's a, certainly a four yard hoop, maybe even five. Another sideways poke from Stewart. This time he's got more on it, and that's come all the way up to the level of the hoop, even if it's a bit too far to the east to make it a runnable hoop. So he's going for the hoop or the ball. You better explain. Um, great shot. Good angled short range jump, the most difficult of, of them all, and that's given Stewart a hopefully decisive lead, although in modern GC, 6 4 is. Never decisive. So many games have been lost from 6-4 six, six, up. Obviously most of them are not, but it's by no means the end of the story. And that's a good start by Pedro, although he's in a bit of trouble with Yellow, which will have to simply play out of the hoop. This looks to me as if Stewart's tried to clear it. And he's banished that. Great shot. I think what he was concerned about was yellow coming through the hoop and either blocking or hampering blue. And that's exactly what was in mind. And that will reduce Stewart's field of view. This shot. And it's actually it's paid dividends. When you're hampered in some way, it's difficult to have the same focus on the length. You rather overhit that. Whether well, black can nick blue back into position, I'm not so sure. But it's still a strong position for blue and black. They're both close to the hoop, and the other two balls are scattered. Well, 
reasonable choice. You can't suffer too much harm there, but uh, black can take very close position if he can't. Oh, don't forget, just gone too far. Yellow in position and presumably not blocking red at the hoop. It's now down down to blue to prevent red scoring immediately. Now if that's blocked, Pedro's choices are to try and do a stop shot clearance on black and then leave it to yellow to clear blue. That's what he's chosen to do. Now, I don't know whether yellow can see the hoop, but where he's got red to is extremely handy if he can on 11 in yellow's next stroke. Great shot from Stewart. He's obviously, I suspect, yellow could see the hoop. So Stewart's played a really good, effectively a control clearance from long, long range. Black is in position from a range of about six yards. Yellow now has a problem, it has to clear blue. He's not always been 100% on those length of shots, so he needs to hit this one. No. Turns away in dismay. That gives Stewart a chance to wrap things up, 7-4 in the first. And seven four it is. Is that the, the mute button? Yes. Yeah, I think and how does it show that you are muted? I think Yeah, and that's the ambient one from the camera over there. I see. Well, no messing around, and that's a very good ball from very good ball from Pedro to get in front of one with his first shot, and a very good clearance from Stewart to stymie that ambition. Too much weight on it. Well, this completely opens up the hoop. It's anyone's now. Stewart has come sensibly a bit short because he doesn't want to give Red the chance of any sort of stop shot clearance, and that's a sensible shot. Blue can see the hoop, can threaten to have a go.
good choice. That's in position and blocking blue. And it's taken out of position so far, all very precise. blocking black possibly, but it's certainly leaving the hoop wide open for blue. The steward will need no, no urging. The traditional assurance that the hoop's as firmly set as it can be. opened, hit the right hand wire and has disappeared over to the west boundary. Well, options here. Could clear black, but it's chosen to put two, two in front and rely on Stuart missing blue at red when it's blue's turn next. Probably try at an in off, a split, a split in off, very popular tactic, but quite difficult to make work. And the drawback is that he's now put black beyond the hoop, and Pedro can now come back into a position that's wired from black by the hoop. Uh, that's gone short. They well leave red having having a shot at the hoop, so Stuart has to move it now. And misses. And that's a really good hoop. And even though it's gone fractionally too far. That's a bit of justice. He's faked the wire. He can now see it won't be possible really for Stuart to get black both wired and in a position where it can run the hoop. He's just going for the wired position if he can get it. It looks as though red can hit black if it has to. Probably a four to five yard hoop yellow's been left. Really should have been trying to get within two yards. These courts are quite quick enough that if you give it just too much, you're just going to have to watch the ball drift inexorably past the hoop. And being past the hoop is <coughs> tactically so much weaker. surprised at that. From the other camera it looked as if red could see black, but maybe that was a mistake. But taking advantage of. That's going to leave a shot of comfortably less than 10 yards. Now he could have been trying to, to cut that. It was from very short range and get it into, sec into the third corner.
but Stuart misses again. So it looks like Spain taking a two hoop lead in this game, with England having won the first. No problem, 2 0 to Spain. Game two. And 1 0 to England. Just a fraction long. And yellow also just going a bit beyond the ideal, so it's not blocking black at the hoop. That's a good shot from Blue. He can now, if he's not moved by red, he can bang yellow down to the south boundary and have a very high chance of being left in peace to run the hoop. And I'm surprised that red just played up, and indeed he's played short. So this is giving Stuart Smith a wonderful advantage, wonderful opportunity to send yellow all the way down to the south boundary. Not as far as it could be. Um, if he's lucky, if he's lucky, three might be in the way. But I suspect that yellow can just get past the eastern upright. Having said all that, it's a shot of at least 19 yards, even even 20 yards. So odds of round about three to one against. Plenty of balls to aim at. He actually missed that on the on the west, which is between the hoop and the ball. Maybe an attempted jaws, which will be a very powerful position for Spain. He actually gets it, so it was obviously a runnable hoop, but I do question whether that was the best that he could have done. I don't think either black or blue had much chance of extracting red if it had sat in the jaws. That would have given Spain a much better chance of dominating the hoop. Is coming up now. Hoop four. That looks as if it's just too far east to be immediately runnable, but it gives it full control of the hoop.
six all. Okay, so did that, did that, oh, that ran. Okay, well, so I, I'll zoom in there and when it, when it okay. yeah over on in from the third. That looks like a reasonable attempt by Brasilia. Maybe about to the west, I'm not sure. Because Bilton made no attempt to, to, to clear it and just took long position himself. Here on court four, a slightly unfortunate clearance attempt by Pedro Lozano has actually cleared both his partner ball and his own ball. Stewart has failed but just back from the jaw so he should be able to get it next time. Red's gone sort of three yards north of four, so maybe he thinks blue cannot do it. The attempt by yellow to shift blue has failed. So it looks as if blue can run easily and should just be content to come through by a few inches. He's so wondering if he can do anything better, but I don't recommend it. I think Pedro's jump shot is pretty, pretty good. So he should just come through by a little. Yep. And that shortens the shot. He's going to have to play with blue to clear red. It's almost certainly red's going to go into good position. That's pretty well what he wants. Going to lawn two for the 13th hoop. And lawn two. And on court two, it looks like Richard Bilton's taking a shot to win the match. So it's failed. They've gone out of sequence. Uh, Wasn't it, was it black? Black, 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 yeah, black, yeah, black. They've gone out of sequence. Yes, you're right. Over on court two we have a slightly silly situation where the players are gloriously unaware that they're out of sequence. Blue has played and now yellow's come up into position and now black will be trying to clear red. It does look either way that Spain's got the advantage there. Richard 
could actually hit both both balls. But no, he misses both. So it'll be interesting to see which ball Brazilio plays. He's looked to have two balls in reasonably good position to score the the thirteenth hoop and win that match for Spain. If he does that'll make the match score 5-3 in Spain's favour. And he's done it, so they shake hands. Oblivious to the fact that red is just following black, but a tight if well deserved win. Over on court three, in game three, Jose Varasal has just taken a slight lead. He's 4 3 up against John Paul Mobley, but John Paul appears to have a good ball down by eight. Here on court four, Stuart Smith, whose game up, has just benefited from a fairly short range miss from Pedro Nazano and is just able to put two balls into, into position. But that does look dangerously close to red, to black. John Paul has gone to four all in the game between the two top 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 seeds. And Stuart Smith runs hoop five well, up two and just beyond hoop. Hoop six to make it three two. It looks on court three as if Jose has gone a bit too far with his black, so the immediate threat to England has disappeared. John Paul has got red and yellow south of the hoop and south of the enemy. Zano's played up to about four yards short of the hoop, but that's leaving black with a five yard clearance on yellow, which he's managed, and the cut means that almost certainly yellow cannot see blue. Or if it can, it's going to risk hitting its own partner ball red. So he's just playing into position, you know, probably trying to hope to block blue at the hoop. That looks to have gone a fraction too far. Spain's taken the ninth hoop on, on court through, so it's 5-4 to Spain. Fortunately, on court four, for England's point of view, Stuart Smith has bounced out the hoop and then somehow bounced back and spun round it. So he's rather put blue, literally, on the back foot, certainly on the back of hoop, hoop six. 
but no joy for Pedro either. That ball's bounced off to the east. So Black comes in to about three yards south. contents himself by simply blocking black at uh, black at the hoop. This would appear to leave blue able to stop shot red away without any trouble. done neatly enough. Blue remaining within a yard of the hoop so if the jump shot for example disturbs yellow and neither black nor yellow run the hoop then yellow will be in a useful position. not quite hit so that gives Stuart a chance it looks to me it has to be a jump shot but certainly from very doable range though he can of course just choose to chip yellow to the side and that's what he's chosen to do chosen the simple option, he's put blue into a good running position and can clear yellow down to the west boundary if red fails to change the situation. Which he does, great shot, clearing blue away this may now be a shot where Stewart prefers to play a slightly quieter shot where he holds black closer to the hoop than might otherwise be the case where he could have hit as hard as he wanted. That's a good shot. That wasn't maximum speed. And he's left black in a good controlling position for hoop six. So no doubt Pedro will be relying on getting blue in front, uh, yellow in front, I'm sorry, which he's done very nicely, and on red being able to clear black. So the natural answer for Stuart Smith is to try and place blue about a yard to the east of black, blocking red at black, and leaves him blue, of course, in position for next time. He's gone for the immediate clearance and got it. So, and now, in fact, this could be quite handy for Stuart if, and it's a big if, if red fails to get black. Well, interestingly, he's going for the block, which he hasn't got. But Stuart's not been 100% with his hoops of late, so. He's got no choice now, he's got to, got to go for it. And if he can get it, then blue is in a very handy position. Hoop set. And he gets it. Three all, and it's a good recovery from 3 0 down.
court three, John Paul Mobley has squared match, the match up again. It's five all in the third. strange miss from Smith. He was trying to clear yellow but he's actually managed to hit the hoop instead and he's in a rather weak position now. Stewart is Missed on to the north boundary. He's going to have a, sh to have a shot. Now, red and yellow are quite close together. It's not completely impossible. He might move both red and yellow with the shot. It would certainly help his cause if he could. No, this is completely and looks a bit disconsolate at that. It looks as though Jose has managed to Jaws 11 and will give him quite an advantage. And John Paul has re responded very well by rushing yellow to south of 11. Great shot. Great shot. And Black just simply goes back into position. He accepts that nothing he can do. I mean, he could have gone for gone for yellow, but has preferred the more conservative option. And John Paul clears blue with authority to the boundary, but yellow. Unsurprisingly, as he's coming from the west, has gone off to the east boundary, about two yards south of court three. And here on court four, as expected, Spain have gone 4-3 up. But England are in a good position. Blue is right in front. Now black has a chance to put in a blocker to prevent yellow clearing blue. Be reasonably close to the blocking line, but I suspect that Yellow can get past what he will see as the right hand side of black and take blue out. But this is not an easy shot, good 10 yards can easily be missed. He's missed everything, so Blue has left an opportunity to come straight back to 4 all. So the battle for Hoop 11 over on Court 3. Down on Lawn 1 the news that Aston Wade not sure actually which sorry it's gone one up against Gonzalo Albarza
just misses red. I thought he might clear black and give himself a rather straighter shot with yellow, but he has actually failed it, and the ball's come out of it, but still a pretty tricky situation for, for England. And the Stuart can pull off another very fine anchor jump. This looks more difficult, to be honest. I think he may be thinking of stop shotting yellow away and relying on blue clearing red. And obviously the risk is that if red is right in front, yellow can just decide to um, peel it. And that would give them a useful 5-4 lead. No, but Stewart knocks that to the boundary, holding almost the, s the same position. Hit black barely, barely moved, it was a good shot. That's a nice one. He has taken black out of the equation and come off it and gone to within eight yards of ten. So if Stewart doesn't hit this, he's in trouble. And he gets it. Well done. Very well done. Because now yellow has to come all the way back. Over on court three, Spain lead 6-5. I'm sorry, no, it's England leading 6-6-5. That mm. seemed to be a complete change round from mm. what we previously saw. So somehow John Paul has snatched hoop 11. Yes, it looks as though... Must have done it with red because black and yellow then played down and blue was right in front of the hoop. Stewart has just cleared red away from an easy running position at hoop nine. And at court ten, at court two, so we could be in the final stages. Jose has to hit now from 12 yards. Yellow looks to be in prime position to make it a 7-5 win for John Paul, but this is a shot he's very good at, and he does. And he's got what we call a Bamford. He's actually managed to get black up to the level of hoop 13. It's not on the north boundary, so he can't run the hoop from there, but that is a really good response. That will give him a substantial advantage if John Paul misses this and blue, which might be able to run the hoop, actually does so. And Stuart Smith finally wins the battle for Hoop 9 to lead 5-4 in Game 2. He already leads 1-0. Looking reasonably healthy for a little moment. John Paul, crucial clearance, but misses into, into, into corner 4. It's going to be a really gripping ending if this blue actually runs. If it doesn't, then advantage England there. And here on court four, Stewart has just put a ball almost into the jaws of hoop ten. three-yard ankle to probably about 20 degrees off the vertical for Jose to make it six all and he gets it very comfortably. So this is now six all in the third between John Paul Mobley and Jose Alvarez Sala and through a previously excellent 
cut clearance. Jose has his black ball within six yards, six yards to the west of hoop 13. But all John Paul can do is to make sure his red ball goes into position, which it does, in fact, goes all the way to the to the boundary, which is probably sens sensible, because if it was left in mid-court, then Black would certainly have a, have a go. Now, I'm equally sure that what Black will do is to put this into position and put the pressure... Or is he trying to block Black? Well, either way... No, he's having thoughts about where, how, how close to the hoop he should go. Finally, settles for something which looks to me like quite a sensible choice, perhaps five feet north. But obviously, the risk is that he can be cleared by red, and so if the yellow ball goes into good position, then this will still be advantage England. Stuart Smith just played a shot which um, has left black almost in front of 11, but they're still contesting hoop 10. So, and I think red is in the jaws, so that's completely stopped any attempt to peel it. But maybe it's far enough back for Stuart to actually clear it from the hoop and keep the hoop 10 alive. And it is. He's managed to extract red, it was obviously touching a wire because he's actually managed to send it down the court to level with with, with, with hoop 12 and black is only seven yards from, from, from white. So the situation in the crucial deciding hoop on court three is that red hopefully has a shot at black, yellow is about four feet in court from the boundary and now blue is on the south boundary and has gone for position, won't want to disturb black, it's going past the hoop now and has certainly finished short of the boundary so uh, quite sure what he achieved, but John Paul now has what looks like absolutely crucial clearance and then he'll have a sort of six yard hoop. Jumping and missing unfortunately. So clearly he had been blocked and that's pretty impressive from the south boundary. So Jose has earned himself a relatively short hoop. And he gets it. That was a very fine win for him and for, and for Spain. Puts them 6-3 ahead in the test. on court four, where Stuart Smith has a slender advantage. Red is in position, but blue is to play, and I'm trying to work out whether yellow has succeeded in blocking blue from red.
Stuart's managed to do is to leave blue in contact with red, so it's pretty certain that it can't do terribly much. So he just plays effectively a stop shot which sends blue north of the hoop and leaves red in position. Black just takes it out because yellow is not in, in position. So this hoop is still, if not quite anyone's, because it's still advantage Spain. Um, he's tried to get wired from blue, but must have left a bit sticking out. But Stuart's content just to take good position him, himself. So red from the boundary. Almost certainly at blue, trying to shift it a bit, and if possible get red over towards 11. But he's just going very gently at it, which I'm not sure, unless it's blocking, it might be, be blocking black at yellow, and if so, if it has done, good shot. shot from black he's not only cleared yellow but he's cleared it on the right by hitting the, the right side so yellow's now gone to just north of hoop two leaving himself a 14 yard 15 yard clearance on blue and if he fails that gives every chance of getting six four ahead and black is a yard perhaps two feet west of the halfway line but of course is there Lawfully, it's not offside. So crucial clearance for Pedro Lozano. 14 yards, maybe a bit more. Nice smooth strike and clears it. Good shot. Taking himself a bit far south, he's now south of the peg off the east boundary. Just perhaps, no, sorry, just a fraction north of the peg. But again, putting the question back to Stuart Smith can you clear from six or seven to seven yards? when it really matters. And interestingly, Stuart feels that he can't run that hoop, or even Jaws, I suppose, because um, he's just played past it, made no attempt to so clearly he was not in position to run too angled so he's just improved his, his position looks as though he is trying to be wired from black but I'm not sure that he is and no he wasn't because black has cleared red gently to the west to the east boundary and is now about due south of the hoop but only just north of the peg Pedro has just gone past the blocking line, so he's leaving a hoop with blue from probably about five yards, but pretty straight. This is for 6 4. Great hoop. As they say, his country needed that. He's 6 4 up and game up. Let's say it, Pete. Convert it into a much needed match win. And Pedro has overhit that. He's been coming from the west boundary and he's got about three yards past the hoop, so no immediate threat to running the hoop. And Stuart should now go comfortably north of him. I was actually chosen just to go into what amounts to running position. It's very close to red, so if blue doesn't clear red, uh, Black will find itself very smartly on the east boundary. And that's a very good shot by Yellow. It's very close to the hoop, pretty well straight. So he can hope quite reasonably to win 11 and very possibly 12. So Stuart's going for this clearance, about 10 yards. But misses, just misses on the left. Black 
was promptly dispatched with a very good slightly split stop shot which has left uh, red in very nice running position perhaps two yards north of 11 so even if this shot this clearance on by black on yellow is successful from 14 yards unless he comes in off of course which is just about a possibility well <laughs> I think he managed to flick it on the other side so it's slightly off a straight line but I think he can now just jaws very very comfortably shoelace repair and he gets it now I can't help feeling that a Jaws would have been a far better bet for him because he and Stuart a bigger advantage than he would otherwise have had. Obviously if he jaws this then Stuart will almost certainly just cruise to the peg and be looking at hoop 12 from 7, seven yards. And he has slightly overdone that. That's only about a yard 4 feet north of 12 but it must be at least 2 yards to the east. Red comes down rather cautiously to just under six yards north of 12. This looks like a much better way to black it is. It's fairly straight two yard pos position. either the hoop or black from just through the hoop doesn't do either might be blocking yellow at red though but no it doesn't it doesn't appear to be so blue at, blue at red to take this as far away as he can and a sort of helpful clearance. Uh, blue is now just off the north boundary between hoops two and six. Um, so he's certainly closer to hoop 13 than he would be. It's now red from just short of the west boundary at black. just misses. I'm not entirely sure what sort of hoop he has here, it's hard to tell but he obviously thinks it's runnable. But unfortunately it hits the far wire a bit too so fully and bounces back and then forwards with the spin. So it's now Lozano who's got probably a two and a half yard 30 degree hoop, perhaps only 20 degrees, to get to six all. And does it very nicely indeed. Very calm, unhurried action. So now still advantage England, but given the game up, but nonetheless this is where Stuart has to get his touch absolutely right. He's a little bit heavy handed when coming down to 12 the first time so let's hope he's taking that into account. That looks quite a respectable effort. Yep that looks good shot. That looks right on top. So 
So uh, six all, hoop 13 in game two between Smith and Lozano. And that looks a pretty good blue to me. I'm not sure how much of it Red can see, but he's having a go, clearly, looking at the stands. He's going with pace. He could see it easily. I just wonder how much yellow can see. And Stuart's interested in that too, and so he may well be thinking. No, he obviously doesn't fancy a mid-range block on yellow. Well, there's another ball in. So this is from... 26 yards, yellow from just inside the south boundary, trying to clear blue, which appears to have a one-yard hoop for the match. So this is a bit on the on the right, and it gives Stuart Smith a great opportunity. Bring England back up to only two behind at six ball. Which he does. Well done, Stuart. I'm signing off. Good afternoon everyone, just a continuity message, so our great, grateful thanks to Stephen for his comments uh, and expert insights. There's not a lot of activity on the lawns, we might just give you a, some wide angle coverage of lawn 2 where Aston Wade is playing. Um, we're waiting for lawn 4 to resume play and there's some distant play on lawn 1. Um, at the moment we'll turn uh, audio off just for the moment and get back to you as soon as possible and hopefully with some further expert commentary from one of the other players who will be sitting out. a correction to what I said earlier in fact this is just some practice going as far as I can tell so um, no live activity at the moment just practicing on the lawns well as I say just leave the cameras on and as soon as we get a match underway we'll give you the, the full coverage with both cameras
Hello everybody, uh, welcome back again. Resuming our coverage on round four. Just kicking off is our match, Richard Bilton against Gonzalo Alvarez Sala. So we'll keep you focused on this lawn. There's currently no other games in play at the moment. Um, Aston Wade has just walked into our commentary booth, having done his practice on lawn three, as you saw that earlier. Aston, do you want to give us a, a quick update as to how you're feeling and what your next match is? Okay, hello again. Um, so, having left you earlier, expecting to play Jose Alvarez Sala, uh, JP took him to three games, uh, unfortunately lost out on the third, so Jose is just having a little bit of lunch and then we are going to get going down on court two. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy the game. Uh, Richard playing over here on court four. Thanks, Aston. So work to be done by England in this next session. We've been on air for three hours and 16 minutes and 51 seconds. 67 viewers currently streaming with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining. And Richard looking to score the first point of this game. So as you head down to hoop two, uh, a quick hello to our roving cameraman, Roderick Treen. Been doing a sterling job all, all, after, all morning and all afternoon. Taking you back to the action.
So another point for England, Richard Bilton, extending his lead to two hoops to nil. Balls scattered around the lawn as they approach, approach hoop three. The wind's picking up here. If anyone's listening to Chris Roberts' terrific commentary yesterday, he was referring to some of the ambient noise around here. Uh, very much the same picture as you can see on the stream there, the, the big marquee in preparation for next week's Giorgio Armani Hurlingham Tennis Classic, where we'll see many of the big tennis stars joining us. Um, you may also hear in the background young children and dogs. We have a very large wedding going on behind us and there's not a lot we can do about that noise. Um, but I expect they'll be going in for lunch at some point soon. Another comment that was made yesterday by Chris, uh, observing how little the tournament referee Francis Coleman had been used, and again even during this morning's sessions, uh, I'm not sure that she was called on to make any uh, rulings at all. And certainly noticeably compared with the speed of play that was also commented on yesterday, the singles moving at a much quicker pace. Shot of Richard from behind here. Maybe wider than Red, who would have expected. Take you to camera two. You can see in the background there, England players having some of their lunch. It seems to be the case, and uh, we do hope that when people have finished their lunch, we'll be able to get some expert opinion for you to commentate on these live games. I wouldn't presume to do so myself, but I have seen David Openshaw in the vicinity, and certainly some players sitting out would be very welcome to join us.
it's hoop four being dispatched rather more quickly than hoop three, which proved rather stubborn. So Richard taking England into 3-1 lead.
good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you're still with us, 69 viewers online, so it's great that you've managed to stay with us. We've been able to secure the, uh, the commentary skills of our Spanish friend, Pedro Lozano, who's going to join us now and spend some time doing some commentary um, in Spanish. So, you're very welcome, and over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. Estoy transmitiendo en directo, como veis. Eh, me han pedido, por favor, que he visto mi juego, pues me dedique mejor a la tra retransmisión porque a veces sí hago, hago algo bien hoy. Como sé que sois muchos los que estáis eh, viendo esto en directo, pues nada, aquí estamos en un sitio maravilloso, ya lo veis. Y por ahora, pues no nos podemos quejar porque vamos ganando eh, 7-4. Y aquí de, delante, en el campo 4, en el campo 4, vamos ahora mismo bueno, empate a 3, como veis. Esta mañana ha llovido un, po un poco, ayer hizo un calor insoportable, con una humedad del 80%. Hoy se está aquí maravillosamente nos tratan muy bien ¿eh? que lo sepáis todos los que vengáis por aquí que estos señores se portan como tales me imagino que nos estáis viendo de todas partes de España no veo por aquí a ver, no veo por aquí el número de sí, alrededor de 69 69 espectadores en directo ok, en el otro lado están jugando Juan Andrés y Fito. Se nota que cuando estáis, nos llamáis por teléfono y nos mandáis mensajes, se os nota el, el ánimo que nos mandáis. ¿eh? Que lo sepáis que, que, que sirve, que sirve. Aquí hay, aquí hay jugadores de una calidad espectacular. O sea, os invito a todos que pasáis por Inglaterra cuando podáis porque esto no tiene precio. Algunas veces se gana, otras veces se pierde, pero se juega todo el tiempo a un nivel que no se puede nunca esperar un error del contrario. Hay que jugar siempre a muchísimo nivel todos los golpes. Espectacular. Los campos, bueno, ya me gustaría a mí tener así muchos campos en España. Y siempre te espera, el campo siempre te espera en el aro. O sea, los aros son, no sé si viste algún partido ayer de Moverly. Moverly es un espectáculo verlo jugar. Hoy, hoy Fito le ha ganado por lo cual el equipo entero está muy orgulloso de haberle ganado el, el, el resultado ahora mismo pues es bastante favorable porque creo recordar que en España en ningún momento pudimos estar por, por arriba de ellos aquí hasta ahora pues ellos están dando todo lo que pueden pero bueno, por ahora no, no se acercan. Esperemos que, que siga así. Vamos a ver el tiro al aro. De Gonzalo. No entran, es que no entran los aros. Es que es muy complicado. O la tira es perfecta, perfecta. O los aros no quieren saber nada de los españoles. Mañana nos quedan todavía una jornada intensa. Pero bueno. Es una pena que solo podáis ver el, el campo 4. Este que parece que es el campo 1 que está delante de, de la casa club. Es el 4. Mañana me toca a mí jugar mi último individual con Bilton. A ver si consigo, a ver si consigo por lo menos ganarle a este pollo. La organización maravillosa. Las cafeterías, allí al fondo podéis ver en, debajo a la izquierda de la Casa Club, hay una barbacoa espectacular.
esta mañana me tocó jugar contra Mulines. Cuando alguna vez os enfrentáis a Mulines, a Mulines, ya veré, contra Mulines. La única lucha para jugar contra él es seguir jugando para, para que uno no tire el partido, porque te entras ganas de tirar el partido. ¿Qué forma de jugar? O sea, no hace nada y te va ganando tres aros arriba. Es espectacular. Vamos a ver, Bilton. El aro está muy cejado. Vea. No se les puede dejar. No se les puede dejar. Es impresionante. Muy preparado, hay que venir aquí, muy preparado. La rapidez del campo, yo al menos no la he conseguido ver en España. Esta velocidad de campo. Me imagino que entre la dureza del campo y los años que tienen, están, o sea, el cristal es lento al lado de esto. Pero bueno, es lo que hay. Esa bola que está. Hay que tirar. No sé hoy la temperatura que tenéis ahí, pero me la imagino. Aquí dentro de poco habrá que ponerse un chaleco. Hay afición aquí, ¿eh? Aquí hay afición. Ya. Pero por lo menos vamos ganándole porque en España no fue así <coughs> en fin pase lo que pase al final nos vamos a llevar una experiencia maravillosa por el sitio, por los jugadores por el tipo de, de campeonato defender la bandera es un orgullo estar aquí es un orgullo estar aquí de verdad es que la retransmisión tiene un pelín de retardo con respecto a la realidad bueno pues a todos un, un un fuerte abrazo a los que nos estéis viendo de Madrid, desde Asturias, desde Galicia, desde Andalucía, de toda España. Me imagino que habrá gente viéndonos de toda España. Cuando llaméis por teléfono o mandéis mensajes a los que se los mandéis, de verdad que vuestros ánimos sirven. Aunque no os parezca, vuestros ánimos sirven. Ha terminado, ha terminado, ha terminado, que no lo veo, que no lo veo. Pito, creo que ha terminado. Es que desde aquí, desde el puesto de retransmisión, no se ve bien el... No se ve bien el resultado. Bueno, pues... Yo os voy a dejar aquí, viendo esto, porque se me va a enfriar la hamburguesa, que no vea las hamburguesas que pongo aquí esta gente. De verdad, espero, espero que los que hayáis podido oír por lo menos un poquito de español, porque si no, sería, hubiera sido todo en inglés, pero bueno. Pues me reclaman por aquel lado, así que yo me despido. Y de verdad, aunque no lo creáis, vuestros ánimos llegan. Un abrazo a todos y espero aportar mi granito de arena a este campeonato. Un abrazo.
So, just as Spain pulls one back, we say goodbye to Pedro and thank him for his, his commentary in Spanish. Still looking across to the other lawns, still no activity on lawn three. Looks like lawn two has resulted in the first game. My apologies, I can't actually see what the scoreboard is. I think it's England winning the first game 7-1. There's been a, a rescheduling re of the matches and the lawns that have been allocated, so we need to find out exactly who's playing on which, which courts. Uh, we'll confirm that for you very soon. Thank you to Nicolas Alfonso for your kind comments about the live streaming. I'm sure, as you said, you almost feel like you're here. Um, it's probably about 10 degrees hotter where you are than, uh, than it is here. Still a humid day. We've had some spots of rain. Quite humid. Winds picked up a bit. Not quite as windy as yesterday. But thank you for your comments and glad you're enjoying the, the streaming. As was noted earlier, and thanks to Toby for, for commenting about the sporadic commentary. Absolutely, it, it is not just lunchtime, but also finding people who are available to come and commentate. One might have thought we'd have more CA members down here. I've seen several faces. This is referred to members of the Croquet Association. I've seen several faces here. Um, maybe the climax on Sunday rules out in a few more visitors. But certainly there's been some terrific shots worthy of applause, which obviously is somewhat lacking because of the lack of spectators. Yes, we'll keep the, the audio open for ambient atmospheric noise. Our wedding party seems to have settled down a bit into their lunch. So following on from Pedro, very happy to welcome back Stephen Mulliner, who's going to take over with some more commentary. Now we've just had a very fine example of good thinking with Gonzalo rushing Red over to the 
eastbound to give it a bit of an angle, and then he managed an extraordinary replacement job, taking Richard Black out of the jaws and putting himself in. And now Richard's now thinking about a, a jump. Quite a, well, he's actually got it out of the jaws, and therefore he's onside as he hit it. But it's five all, game one. No immediate threat to Hoover 11, but doesn't make it easy for the other side. Uh, no point in putting a, get, a, a ball right in position, particularly when blue is not offside and almost vertically ab above the hoop. It makes it much easier to get that ball in line with the hoop, and indeed makes it a bit easier to get to get the block too. I think because you'll see where yellow is and you'll know how far south of didn't really spend much time thinking about that but that's blue into blue into to good position <coughs> and may well be blocking yellow at the hoop so red at black from nine yards This time he misses, and he's actually been very impressive. He doesn't bother with casting. He just walks up, lines himself up, puts the mallet down, gets composed, and takes it back. Quite similar, really, in general, approach to Reg Bamford. And he seems to do pretty well with it. <coughs> but following the miss, Black can just dispatch get into the north boundary and leaving black in position from about four yards and blue of course has a very easy hoop if it's not disturbed by yellow actually he is doing a bit of pre-casting pre but once he's got into his stance the mallet goes down Now that was one of his less impressive efforts. I was actually right on the line. You could see what he was doing. He looked fine until he took the mallet back quite considerably towards his left foot and then came th came through, the face twisted to the left and he missed by a good six, six inches left as he saw it, which for him is a surprisingly large miss. So Richard has a chance now to make it 6-5 and even more importantly, if he can come to rest, well, that's not too too bad. He's got down. Well, he's hmm, he's short of the peg by about two feet, and much will depend on whether Gonzalo can place red where it's wired from blue by the peg. And that may well be open. He has gone at least a yard beyond the north-south line between hoops. And I think that black, which was get looking dangerously like blocking blue at red, may just have finished just to the west of red, so blue does have a chance. Now yellow come, comes in, very narrow, very narrow. In fact, it goes south of Rover, which is south of 12, which is no good to anyone. And now Richard will have a chance from seven, seven yards to clear red to the south boundary. And there's a very fair chance that yellow might block red coming back at black. But first Richard has to hit.
and he does that, uh, hits it actually on the left hand side and so it goes down literally a foot inside the south boundary not very far up to the east of the hoop 1-2 line so now Gonzalo has a shot of about 13 yards to clear black away from an otherwise pretty easy hoop running position to win the game 7-5 so crucial clearance hit or die That one he missed on the right, so clouted the hoop and bounced away. So Richard now has three foot hoop, almost straight. No problem at all. Well done Richard, that's 7-5 and first game to England. The match score currently is 7-5 in favour of Spain. A slight hiatus here. Richard's wandering around near corner four, but his opponent has decided to take a slight breather. Down on court two, in something of not an upset but an unexpected re result, Aston Wade took the first against Jose Alvaro Sala, who has been very impressive so far, by the rather unflattering score of seven to one, which prompted his captain to complain mildly that Aston was making him look bad, given that he'd just lost to, to Jose in an extremely tight match was pointed out to JP that he was getting rather old, so maybe that explained it.
right, it looks like battle is going to recommence on court four, where Richard Bilton leads 1-0 against Gonzalo Alvarez Sala, having won the first 7-5. Gonzalo is starting the second game, having lost the first, he gets the right to play the first ball into the second game, so he's playing red. He can choose either of his balls, it doesn't matter. And the sequence will continue from there. Now that's come up just a fraction short of what he would have wanted. And that means that the reasonable tactic for Richard, which is what he's doing, is to come behind that ball. Possibly could have come a bit further behind, as that's very close and therefore is at risk if Gonzalo puts yellow into a really good position and red is left there and red could just play down and land almost completely on black giving it no shot and although yellow is not perfect it's a great improvement on red and that would be a fairly runnable hoop so Richard's got really has got to clear red here a miss on red I think will be likely to lead to loss of first hoop unless Gonzalo makes a mess of what looks like a sort of two and a half yard slightly angled um, yellow and Richard has chosen not to do that he's in the best position of all four but not entirely sure that's going to make much difference Gonzalo indeed turns round and I imagine will just trickle up and sit right on top of black well, I'm completely wrong. He's cut him off to the to the west boundary, leaving a six-yard clearance. I can't help feeling that was the wrong choice. Um, but now you see he's actually opened him, himself up to the risk of being cleared to the east boundary. And then it, Blue will have a very adequate chance at running the hoop. So. Well, didn't catch all of that, but he's certainly hit that well enough to take yellow to just beyond the peg, so it's looking at a 14-yarder back. Gonzalo shooting at the end of the last game rather fell from its previous in impressive levels. So we're looking to make amends now. much better bang on target although it's sent yellow off to the side boundary and blue can now decide whether to have a go at the hoop or simply go into position is certainly not going into positions as Richard having a go for the hoop. But no, that hits the, the left upright slightly to the outside of centre, so the ball bounces away about eight yards north and west of the hoop. Gonzalo takes the more cautious view, simply lagging up to two yards short, or five feet short probably. Um, made no effort to get wired from blue, which might yet prove to be a mistake because the shot from blue to red is only about nine yards. So back comes black from the west boundary. It's a good weight. <laughs> Unfortunately, that has completely blocked blue having a go at red unless it hits black and hopes that black hits red. And Gonzalo just comes up, puts another... Ah, that's, he's actually moved black a bit. So at least in theory... And he's certainly actually frozen up. Both black and red, you have a sort of golf croquet impasse situation. 
although with blue to play next, the blue can now hit yellow. And it, it, it depends crucially on whether or not red and black are actually in contact, in which case red can play a croquet stroke of the stop shot variety, which is a powerful position to be in, or just marginally apart, which then it greatly restricts what red can do. You probably may have to do nothing at all. We could have a, a sort of single ball duel for the suit. I'm sure this is blue trying to clear yellow. And he gets it. Good shot. And interestingly, does not quite get off the boundary himself, which is potentially bad news as yellow is right by him off the, off the boundary. And this is interesting. Black is just north of, and I think it must be, they are not in contact. The way he's looking at it, although I don't think he plays much association croquet, Gonzalo, so it's possible he hasn't just thought of it. But if they are in contact, I'd be playing a stop shot here. Put red right in front, front of the hoop and be able to get black, certainly six yards away, maybe, maybe more. Everyone's got these modern mallets which are peripherally weighted and that makes doing sharp stop shots significantly more difficult. He's now looking the other way and so they might be in contact. It should looks on. Sure if he must know whether they're in contact or not. He's deeming. Ah, ha, ha, yes. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Um, Richard Lowe would have had a reason for it. Now, whether they're still just out of contact, they probably are. I can't imagine he would voluntarily put them into contact. But yes, yeah, so he's giving himself more of his own ball so that he can actually perhaps think about trying to run the hoop with the left-hand edge of his mallet. Not easy, but it's only four feet away, so it's not an impossible idea. Now, what's interesting here is Gonzalo might consider trying to hit the left-hand cheek of red in the hope it'll send back away but remain almost instead he just goes up just past the ball so he's now got a sort of five foot two yard hoop <laughs> I think Richard just um, if he can see yellow he can move it if he can see the hoop he can run it Black has the freedom to get in front of yellow, that's certainly sure. Um, if you can do it without leaving red, red the hoop, that would be better. Anyway, the power is being, being applied at the moment. Went to the hoop, perfectly sensible choice, didn't quite get it, which is unfortunate. Not in contact, but he's playing a shot. At an, they want a referee. Oh. Francis Coleman, who is the tournament referee, comes on. Here, the problem for Gonzalo is avoiding committing a fault called the double tap. The balls are clearly not in contact, but not very far apart, probably only two or three millimetres. And the risk is that if you play too much along the line of centres, then your ball will bounce back onto the mallet. So he'll demonstrate what angle he wants to play. She will mark the balls in case she decides that a fault has been committed.
those two separated at probably an angle of 70 degrees, so it's likely to have been a fair shot. And the standard of proof is the balance of probabilities, so unless the referee feels that it was more likely than not that a fault was committed, a fault will not be awarded. Black to clear yellow from a range of round about 24 yards. Good line. Very good line. And the ideal outcome. He ends up on the boundary below the hoop and yellow is on the side boundary with no shot at, at, at the hoop. And what is more, red is not that far away from things, so if yellow comes back into position, which I'm sure it will, its risk is it'll be cleared up the court by by black. The batter's gone far too far. Um, probably jaws from there, but running will be a challenge. So I think Richard can now just simply play gently back in front of the hoop. Um, wiring from red will leave him a pretty difficult hoop himself, so it may not be, be worth it. So that leaves Gonzalo a nine yarder with which to get rid of blue with red. If he misses it, then black will seek to clear yellow a long way to the north and hope to be winning the hoop with a fairly easy blue. Very, very pure shot, which unfortunately for Gonzalo has cleared yellow much more than blue. And blue, in fact, is still in reasonable running position. Richard decides he's not going to bother with the hoop from the, from the boundary, but will be content with two, two balls in, in front. And that means that either he takes out blue, in which case blue could try and take out red, or he takes out black, in which case blue will have a shot from where it lies. This looks like what it should be, which is a shot at blue to get rid of the immediate threat and hope that blue misses red from a range of about eight or nine yards. Spot on. It seems to have rediscovered his shooting boots. So, And also the other bonus you can sometimes get is when your ball, in this case yellow, follows through into the path of the target ball, blue, trying to get back to the ball it wants to move, and I think it must have done that, or it thinks it's just too far, and he's just putting another ball in. Very patient approach. It's gone a little far. No, maybe it's blocking red of the hoop. was happy to keep getting into the groove with his centre ball hits. Let's just move black away from its danger position from Spain's point of view. But now Richard can try and bring it back so it blocks yellow and blue. well past the blocking point, though it's in position, which is obviously a good thing, but Gonzalo now has a four-yarder to get rid of blue. And again, he didn't hit that quite in the middle, so yellow has gone off to the right, but he was just happy to get blue away from the immediate danger area. Now Richard can come back in and try his luck with another attempted block, and taking position. That, I think, has just fallen short. The other one went too far. This has just fallen short. The Mabel has it. Um,
Ah, very nice. He was rushing blue into black and he's lengthened black shot at the hoop without ruining it. So it's now a six yard hoop, hoop attempt, which is I think worth taking because yellow can only move blue back to the south boundary and then it can deal, deal with red. So this is a completely free hoop for Richard. So nice imagination by Gonzalo but hasn't actually improved his chances that greatly. Six yards. Oh, no. no luck again, just hitting the foot of the right hand upright and spinning round to the left. Well, that's certainly not blocking blue at the hoop if Richard wants to, wants to try his luck again. Probably feels this. Well, the trouble is that red's going to have a shot to move black much further away than it is. So, a gentle stop shot clearance, which leaves blue in a very plausible position from the stand about five yards south and a bit east of hoop one. But now, Gonzalo, yeah, no thought of clearing black, just. Looks for the block, I would think. I think he probably was, but he's clubbed that well past blocking point. And of course, Richard now faces the problem that what can he do with yellow that's terribly useful? Just hitting it straight will mean that yellow can send blue to the north boundary. So really, he needs to be hitting this so that he's cutting it as far to the east as he can manage. Then the worst that can happen to blue is it's sent to the west boundary will have another seven yarder to clear red to prevent red scoring the hoop. So he's giving it some, some thought. The other shot, which I don't think is as good, is for uh, black to clear red the immediate threat and hope that Gonzalo misses what's no more than, I would say, a three and a half yard first hoop, which is not the sort of hoop you want to leave a good opponent. So a hard, no, and the other thing you can always do, of course, is to try and block both balls. That's pretty good as far as red's concerned, but has it blocked yellow? Hard to tell. Because it may just get in the way a bit. Three yards, he must think he's got a clear line to the hoop. Ah. Well, I'm sure that the presence of black didn't, didn't help that. Now Richard's got a superb chance if he can get this ball to go well to the north, either to the left of black, probably the safer one, or a cut taking it to the right. But not what he wanted, um, except it has, got, it has got rid of yellow quite splendidly, uh, but this is just a seven yarder. And the nice thing about moving red much further away, if you could, is that he should be able to run hoop one up to hoop two under control from there. But now he's likely to be cleared away and will have to start the process all over again. That's a really unexpected miss. Gonzalo is normally very solid from that range. And that will hurt. His only consolation is that yellow is not offside, or will not be offside when the soup is run.
to East Northampton for Richard. He's trying to hook completely cleanly and all the way up to the north boundary, which of course leaves, leaves a huge wired area for Consalo to put yellow into from a range of about six yards. When you're only a foot in front of the hoop, really you should be seeking to land it probably no closer than three yards on the playing side of the, of the next, next hoop so that you have a decent threat but you're at no risk of going beyond the hoop and immediately becoming the hunted in the, in the chase between the hunter being wired and the wiring ball. Now in comes yellow. Uh, that may have gone a fraction far. And I think that's probably open to black which is bad news so blue can now come up and if it avoids getting in the way that looks absolutely fine so Richard will have a shot of just over seven yards call it eight to clear yellow and if yellow misses blue um, have a chance to go two nil up Red comes up, but nowhere near the action really. It's only about three yards, perhaps four yards west of hoop six. Maybe he's just hoping that Richard's going to miss and that'll be a better place from which he can approach hoop three. it may turn out that way because Richard's missed and gone down to the south boundary. Clumsy, didn't look a very long hoop, so Richard at least has a chance um, of making this not only 2 0, but leaving yellow in what should be quite an embarrassed position with difficulty of getting over towards hoop 3. cleanly over the top and he made sure he had enough height that he wouldn't peel yellow which would be the real disaster. So now red has to get absolutely plumb position because its partner's not going to be joining it. That looks pretty good to me. <coughs> well this is going to require almost certainly two shots at it. Um, yeah it looks pretty well plumb in front. Eight yards or so. Nice tempo to that shot. Just a bit out to the right. Yellow obviously was further back from the hoop than I thought. He's played that perfectly normally over. Richard shoots at red and misses. So this should give 
Gonzalo an infant chance of opening his account in this game. And again, he's close enough. He really should be trying to wait this shot. Of course, the trouble is the amount of wire that you take. If you hit it hard enough to cope with a bit of wire and then you don't get any, which is what happened to Richard at hoop one, you go sailing through to the far boundary. And if you hold back a bit to try and slip down to that four to five yard area and take a bit of wire, then you stop. So now Richard has got the chance to be first really close to four and he's left that one a bit short, I'd say, at least four yards, maybe four and a half. Of course, the merit of being as deep as you can be without going past the hoop is that you lengthen the shot for the ball that will be clearing you, in this case, red. Now, yellow's just gone in front of black, and that may conceivably be a bit of a problem for, for black in terms of trying the hoop immediately, but equally, he may be perfectly content. Just to send it away. So we've got red, I imagine, trying to clear black. Yep, that's that. But sends himself down to the south boundary, uh, about three yards to the east of the line of hoop three and four. And that means that Richard has at most a seven yard clearance on yellow with blue in good hoop running position. Of course, what Richard can think about doing, but whether he feels sufficiently uh, bold, is to try and hit the yellow slightly on the left hand side and um, come over towards hoop five. Right idea, wrong way around. Um, but yellow has to come straight back, of course. So he's got a sort of 15 yarder to clear blue. And black is somewhere near hoop two. like it, missing on the right, so Richard has an opportunity here to make it 3-1, by no means a decisive lead ever in, in golf croquet, but if you happen to win hoop 5 as well, well then it begins to become meaningful. First things first though, he's got to run 4 from reasonably straight and 2 yards out. and that's taken a bit of wire so it's only about four feet south of the hoop and that will shorten by at least a yard the clearance he will have to make almost certainly on red so 3-1 to England and one game to nil up in comes red to the hoop pretty sensible position it's important on these courts they're fast enough you really do have to give yourself an extra yard of hoop, hoop length as insurance against going out of position. Well, not a bad shot from Richard. Black is um, 
three yards from the hoop. That I don't think runs. Uh, so again, all down to what can't be more than than a seven seven yarder, unless he's blocked himself, of course. So blue at red, seven yards. But this is <coughs> to the west penalty area. If he can run this all the way up to six, this is every chance to equalise this this game. Just long enough to be slightly problematic. Needs a nice smooth stroke with ah. yeah, just long enough to be problematic. And that gives Richard a chance to steal the hoop if you call stealing missing your clearance from four and then getting the hoop any, anyway so a real body blow to Gonzalo would be Richard running this with enough wire and pace to get halfway between the peg and, and hoop six give him a really strong position And he gets it, but all the way up to the north boundary. But still, 4-1 is always good. But Gonzalo now has to try and find a wide spot, but must get in position. almost an extraordinary jaws from the west boundary. It's just flicked off the eastern wire and hopefully hasn't blocked black at yellow. Had a go for yellow, but missed it by quite a bit on the on the left. So he's actually cleared his own blue blue away, and blue, of course, will be offside if yellow runs six. No problem with that. 4-2 in favour of England. And blue will no doubt be sent to the east penalty area. Indeed. Court two, we have Aston Wade possibly on the brink of beating Jose Alvarez Sala by two games to nil, but I say on the brink. I think I may be looked as if it's blue to play. Aston's walking away down towards corner, corner one. Red and black are both in position. Yellow is short of the hoop. 
and the score was 7-1 to Aston in game one, but it's come down to the 13th in game two. So he's clearly shooting at something, which one assumes it must, or maybe he's trying to, no he is, he's going for this, presumably trying to, to clear red. Just missing. Just missing. So back on court court four, Richard has a sort of three yard, somewhat angled chance to go five two up at hoop seven. into the wire and comes back. I mean he's certainly close to the hoop and neither red nor yellow seem to be in position to take immediate advantage. And black is two and a half yards to the west of hoop two. Back on court two, Gonzalo and thread Jose. with knocking Aston's black away. Yes, this looks as though Aston's been left left a hoop. But no bounces out. It's obviously pretty angled. Um, <laughs> so, in court four, uh, Richard having failed, red is now what looks like in the jaws, it possibly with black right behind it, I'm not entirely sure, and yellow is trying to clear blue from a range of just over seven, seven yards. And makes no mistake, so both balls travel about 14 yards. He sees no purpose in trying to actually hit red, so he's actually trying something quite subtle to come right in front of it so that he can't go down easily to the. And indeed, he just stood. But now, Richard has the problem that his black was right behind it. It's now 4 3 to England in game two. They lead 1 0, 7 5 in the first to Richard. And now, Richard's got the problem that his, his black is probably only six inches at most a foot behind hoop seven and red has run only by about four, four, four feet so can Richard get down anywhere near us? Well he's cleared blue uh, black is now approximately three yards north of 
hoop 5, so it's not completely out of things for hoop 8, but not as close as you'd like. Yellow now comes in and gets very good position, probably 5 feet north, almost straight, but not that far from black. Black's only about 9 yard, yards away. So blue comes in, all seem to accelerate down, down that hill, and stops just two feet north of yellow. Good shot. So they all come down to whether blue is left in peace by red, and whether black can hit yellow. Then, of course, whether yellow, if it's hit, hit to the boundary, can clear blue. So red comes down absolutely level with blue. So here's the crucial clearance, the first one. And what's also a bit relevant is that if he misses this and yellow runs, I wonder if blue has a straightforward shot over to hoop nine. Nova and Court 2, we just had an update that in the end, Spain won the 13th. So Jose Valasar has squared the match against Ashton Wade. They're now one all. Uh, Richard made no mistake with his, with his clearance, so Gonzalo has a clearance from the south boundary of about just under 10 yards. Good. Hits it half ball, but sends it at least 15 yards away from red. So it's Richard's task to try and clear red. Otherwise, we should have the game at four all. Albeit Richard will have no particular problems getting over to to hoop nine. Richard's come in, perhaps trying for the for the block. I mean, he's in good position for eight, but that's likely to be theoretical or irrelevant if Gonzalo can run what looks like a three-yard hoop at most, maybe two and a half yards. No problem with, with that. The score is four all, game two. One game to England by 7-5. So Bilton sends Black over towards nine, quite tight to the hoop. That's a great touch there. Oh yes, that's finished less than two yards south and I would think almost dead, dead straight. And as yellow is well up to hoop two. He'll, he can probably have a have a shot at this if he finishes on the south boundary. That's perfectly adequate. <coughs> nice smooth strike, but just missing on the, on the right and finishes just to the west of corner four. Well, with red on the south boundary and black in good position, Richard has the classic opportunity to try and put in a blocker. Um, that's got a bit too much weight on it, but he ends up with a second prize of having the second ball in pretty good hoop running position, perhaps three yards back. So 15 yard clearance now required from Gonzalo, red on black. by quite a lot on the right. So a very a 
fairly rare to see him miss, miss by that much. He missed it com completely. No, no, he didn't. Um, it's just finished well to the well to the east of the hoop, um, and he doesn't give a huge body language signs. But it was good shot, and that's five five four. Yellow comes up to pretty good position, two yards south, but leaving Richard with a nine yard clearance to come. In comes blue up from nine. There's a bit of a swing on all these courts, and he's got that very nicely. It's in effect wired from black, but probably two yards back at most. Well, he's actually run red into yellow and pushed it forward. Now, whether that affects what Richard can see, I can't tell. It probably leaves it open, but it certainly increases the risk now. If he were to hit yellow on the right-hand side, he might well clear blue as well. And this needs to be a straight shot. If he hits it on the left-hand side, it might run into blue straight straight away. But So blue is slightly at risk here if yellow is not hit absolutely straight. it is. Well, it's hit straight enough that he sent yellow almost straight down court, leaving something like a 15-yarder back at blue, and black has come all the way over to within three yards of the west boundary near the penalty area. Ah, there looks as though there may have been very experienced player Pierre Baudry has stepped onto the court which would normally be as a sequence umpire. Now I didn't notice anything wrong, yellow played then black. Rather black played clearing yellow. Um, so normally it would be yellow to play, that's what the players would, it, would expect. Uh, and if there has been a wrong ball by No, we know what's happened. There's been a divot, and well, there's a mark on the on the grass. It's all I'm I can say from here. But I can see Pierre Baudry, who's an experienced refer, refer, referee, checking to see whether Richard's committed a lawn damage fault. And the law eleven two ten for those who know their law books or rule books, I should say, inside out. And if it's ruled that there is a fault, then yeah, I think there must have been. Uh, Gonzalo has a choice of leaving the balls as they are, or having them put back. And I would think the balls are being put back, which doesn't come as much of a surprise. I'm actually quite surprised that he would have um, got that good an outcome. So I presume it wasn't really... Um, very large mark, nonetheless quite sufficient to satisfy a referee, but 
significant damage had been caused to the court surface, which would affect the passage and effect affect the passage of a ball that passed over it. So the damage is repaired, the balls go back, and Lack's turn is over, and Yellow now plays. Now what he's seeing the chance to do is not just take the sort of straightforward hoop, but to play a split stop shot so that he can get blue very well away, but take yellow over towards the front of 11. And that's pretty well done. Probably a bit long to be thinking of running immediately, but he's certainly given himself a significant advantage at hoop 11. So it would suit Richard very well to hit this one. Yellow would at least have to come back and give up that extremely advantageous position. Missed by very little on the left. Richard does the usual, I cannot believe it, actions. It, I think it must have been online, in fact, until quite late, and found a bit of late swing, as a spin bowler or a seam bowler would say. unfortunate. Um, the only upside of Black being unable to take advantage of his hit on yellow, it's gone back to its original place and of course now it's to the north of red. And um, But most importantly, yellow will have to come back. That's an interesting choice, it is, and it may be that I just can't tell where red may actually be, have come back and is actually outside the hoop and therefore open to blue, but difficult for black to hit. So what's he going to do with yellow? Well, fairly either a cautious return into position where he can't be used by Black, or he's staying reasonably close to the halfway line. If Red does end up scoring 10 and making the score 5 all. But obviously, if Richard can extract Red, that's good news for him. Nope, that's just missed, so it's presumably didn't even flick red. So, five all. But the difference is that there's not quite the same advantage um, to red and yellow as they had before, though it's still not inconsiderable because yellow is that much closer to where black will end up than it normally would be. But that's a pretty good effort from Richard. That may well force 
Gonzalo to have a go at it immediately. And if he could hit centre ball, great for him. If he gets half a ball, well, the hoop will be left open to the next occupant, which will be blue. Not a bad shot. I mean, it wasn't hit full ball, and he has gone well. He's eight yards at least, and black is, if anything, in the more favourable position. So how good can this be? Blue is coming into position, hoping to get there. Looks as though it's done enough. Only just. Um, I don't know whether he'll feel he should do the same. Probably will. No, he's thinking about it. Mm, I much prefer to be blue and black here than red and yellow. Good shot. Though it does have the slight downside that red has gone firmer to the south of the hoop, and so Richard has the chance at least to put black into position wide from red. That would then force yellow to pull off at least a nine or ten yard clearance. Well, that's not getting there, so red will be able to clear black. Although it'd be fair, black can only be, be cleared straight to the north, so it's not as if it's going to have a hugely long clearance to do on yellow. It looks like blue in position, hard to be completely sure, as it's obviously quite, quite close to the hoop. cut which maximizes the distance that black will have to travel to clear yellow. A straight hit would have left him probably no more than eight yards. This is probably going to be more like twelve. Missing by coats of paint, but they are missing. Now that's interesting. I've been convinced he'd been taking the hoop. He looks as though he's right on top of it, but. A bit surprised, although he's obviously got full control of the hoop at the moment. You can see if he just felt he wanted to be closer still to maximise his chances of getting a really good ball down at 12. Shot. And importantly, he caught it on the left side, so he's up on the north boundary, so has a reasonably short shot to deal with red, depending how well red goes in. Looks as though 
So red might be blocking blue at the hoop, and black is at least in slightly long position, but well out of the way. position but all comes down to can blue clear red. Uh, and not peel it of course, which is unfortunate. Really sensible shot and uh, just when a bit of missing left or right of centre would have been absolutely ideal. So a slightly bold shot from unnecessarily bold. Uh, it's gone well, well past 12, probably something like six yards. Richard couldn't be accused of over ambition there. He's six yards north of 12. So, yellow's in position, black's behind it, blue comes down. Well, I wouldn't, but blue I think is open to red, so I would be surprised if that's not what Consalo chooses to clear. Oh no, just happy to go in. Is that really blocking black? Because if it's not, then black at yellow seems a pretty obvious one. Unless, of course, blue, which I can't really sense how far to the west it is. It clearly is to the west, but whether it's a plausible hoop is what matters, and it may well not be. Well, he hit it, and he hit it away, but he really hasn't hit it as far as it might be, which is another four yards. And this will now be yellow at blue, with red sitting in very good position to take the game 7-5 and square the match. Unless, of course, blue can hit that. And that's unfortunate for Spain. He's flicked off and got to a very nice position as far as 13 is concerned, but I'm sure that won't be relevant because they're not going to be finishing this hoop for at least one rotation. That's a very short clearance on red. So, advantage England at this hoop at least. And that will just square the game at six all. So I'll consider what to do. Red is by hoop four. He's got yellow and black 
sorry, the blue and black within three yards of the hoop. So he goes sensibly some distance away. But that of course allows red to try and take position, blocking, so black taking position, blocking red at the hoop, which he might well have done. And then blue can take position, blocking red at black. And Gonzalo is not interested in trying, trying, trying a shot, which might leave him on the south boundary. Just comes down about three and a half yards north of twelve. shot he's just rolled into yellow certainly making it difficult for yellow to get back up to 13 which is an interesting state of affairs although the same will be true if yellow does nothing that blue won't be going anywhere far either they can always play somewhere and it looks as though he's got the block in which case we're going to six all and a more interesting situation than you usually see. The balls are not actually completely together from one of the other cameras, but it does look as though he is blocked on black. So basically Richard has the opportunity, at least to contest 13, um, not really to get any sort of rush. Yep, so 6 all, game 2, England lead 1-0. And Gonzalo has the first shot up to 13. start. Probably two and a half yards back. Ah, oh, great shot from Richard Wilton. He's clipped yellow firmly on the left cheek, sent it to within a couple of yards, maybe three, of the corner corner flag, and he's just a little bit to the west of the hoop three four four line on the north boundary. Very timely hit. In comes red and has made the blunder of well, it's a temporary blunder anyway, of going into the hoop from the back and not getting getting through. Well, I'm going to have a look at that now. He must get up with this black. He does, he does. Black's in reasonable position. And this does give Richard quite an opportunity. Depending on what yellow does, blue can just drift up into jumping position and wait 
can see what red can do. Which will not be very much. And the mistake which had been made is to bring blue up so that red could hit it fairly hard coming back through the hoop. to do is to cut the damage down by hitting black. Well, this, uh, hmm, if it doesn't get any, if it doesn't stay stay close, then the the jump shot finish becomes very obvious for Richard Bilton. Obviously, not completely certain, but a very good chance of him winning the game and the match. Well, to give him his credit, he has hit that gently, but he's definitely south and west of the hoop, so that will actually encourage Richard to play for a position which is wired from yellow and cannot conceivably be hit by red coming back through, through the hoop. So, needs two good shots here with blue. First, a touch shot to get him for position. which I think he's got very well indeed that I'd be surprised if yellow can see much of red much of blue Well, the roving reporter thinks there may be just an edge of blue that yellow can hit. And there was no choice. Contra has to come back through by the minimum possible that he's managed to do. And now the issue is... I'd be very surprised if he can, can see it, and then can Richard play the required jump shot to end the game and the match. But that blue from... Six yards, six and a half yards was very good. On for general back back position. The other option was to try and get between yellow and whatever it could see. But at least with this, if there is a nick on blue, then it can clear red hard to the side down to the west and leave black with the job of running the hoop for the game and match. he just feels that blue cannot in fact jump it well not with no attempt maybe he just simply was 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 wired there was no point in even looking at it so Richard now has this shot shortish range jump has done one of these very well earlier gets plenty of height quickly And he's done it very cleanly indeed. Well played, Richard Bilton. 2-0 to England, and that brings the score to 7-6. And I will sign off as I'm playing next.
thanks to Stephen for his commentary on that last game. We're going to take a short break. It's a bit of a hiatus um, at the moment here. So we'll just leave the... taking
all of the hoops are being reviewed by the tournament organiser Jonathan Powell at present. Hopefully no bounce offs. We have with us in the media tent tournament referee Frances Coleman of Phyllis Court. Um, she has a word for people watching in South Africa at present. Hi Sylvia, got your comments, thank you very much. Um, I can't find Stephen at the moment, there's someone else commentating, but I'm glad you're all enjoying it and uh, I'll pass on your good wishes to everybody here. Thanks Sylvia and Peter, bye.
Um, I'm going to go get a go right. coffee, uh, and then I'll, I'll step out. Okay, so we'll... Will's just go off to get a coffee. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but we will have Will back after his coffee. And we also have Richard in the media tent as well. Um, yeah, thank you for your question about uh, what we're we watching now. We are actually on watching court uh, number two, where Aston Wade is playing uh, Jose, and their score is 6-5 uh, uh, to, uh, to England. So Aston 6. So this is the deciding game, uh, having the two previous games being uh, one, one all. Um, we will try and move that camera and give you a better view on that. Um, and then warming up on court four, and I can give you a quick preview of court four. We've got Stephen Mullen warming up, and he will be playing uh, Gonzalo. Um, but uh, we've now put Richard on camera duty. Um, and we'll see this through to the conclusion of the of the Aston uh, Jose match. Uh, uh, um, Wixy Wix, you've asked where the commentary tent is. So the commentary tent is just to the side, diagonally behind corner one of court four. So it's close to the, the main house, uh, very close to the uh, hospitality area where you can hear the the wedding party have picked up since they've now had their lunch. The children are fully energized and making their presence felt. But thank you for your comments. So we're just seeing what's happening in six five. So Aston's gonna play through. say what Jose's got on and squares the game. So with six all off to the deciding hoop. We'll follow that through, take you up to hoop 13 and for the very deciding final deciding hoop of this match. a man down at the moment in the media tent so I'm adjusting the camera whilst we follow this final hoop on court three just sorry court two I'm too big pardon I've got sitting next to me Richard Bilton how was your day being Richard I think uh, I played quite well started a little bit slowly in the first game but uh, started to come back, won the second, and then it was a very close third game against Basilio. And you may have just seen on court four, I beat Gonzalo 2 0. Played quite well there as well. Excellent. It was a bit sticky on hoop three, wasn't it? There was a bit of a um, few attempts to run that particular hoop, if I remember rightly. Yes, in one of the games, we, I think we both had two attempts. And we noticed the um, the hoops being tightened for this next game with Stephen Mullen. Did you have any 
particular they, feeling as to how tight they were or how secure and firm they are? They should be the same width as before, it's just that some of them were a bit low, so they've probably been raised and they're perhaps a little bit loose after, I think that's, this will be the fourth game on here today. Yes. Back to join us, but just following that, yes, thank you. Oh, yellow <laughs> steeple chasing into the <laughs> into the tent there. So we're just trying to catch this last deciding hoop on uh, lawn two, court two. Do you suppose Aston might have a crack at this from the boundary? As you say, Richard. To him, he, red is going to be clever in black, so he could just play in and make yellow take shot on or just have a go himself if he gets it. He's yeah. got it. It's terrific. Oops, my pardon. So, that concludes. That's the last um, match from the second round finished, which makes the test score seven each England and Spain. Excellent. Got Stuart Smith down on long one um, against Basilio. They're in the third game. It looks like 5 3, I think we saw on the camera. 5 3 to Stuart. To yeah. Stuart's 5 3 up in the third game. JP is a game down. point down in game two, but that's still anybody's. And you're done for the day? I Richard? finished, yes, me and Will got the last round out. So looking ahead to tomorrow, what's what have you got in store? Well, tomorrow is the, the day where all of the, the seeds play their opposite number in both the doubles and the singles. Right. So whatever the test score is after today, it's still anybody's to win. Aston's win makes it seven each. It could be um, eleven seven. It could be nine each. <coughs> First to fourteen, 20, twenty-seven point match. Ah, oh. was it the case two years ago in the away match in Spain? Was it a thirteen eight? Am I right in thinking yeah, that? It was a thirteen eight win because um, we got more laws here. We decided to have some more matches as well. Gotcha. It's best of twenty-one there. So you basically two rounds tomorrow. I'm you know, thinking that yeah. with a view to essentially, finishing essentially by about midday or it's, um, lunchtime at least. Two matches a day each. plan for this evening is this evening we've got the um, formal dinner for the players and various officials that's probably here at the club that's, and that's here at the club um, not too full but What else have you got coming up this season that's in your diary? Well, all of the England players here 
this weekend. I've got the British Opens next week. That's so only, exactly. only yes. Um, Apart from Will, we're all playing in the doubles. Me and Aston are playing together. JP is playing with Toby. Stephen's playing with Johnny Clark. That should be interesting. Stuart's playing with Steve Leonard. Just turn the camera on to court three. Just open the. Oh, that's kind of you to do that. We've now recruited Richard into camera duty. Richard's doing a very good job at hiring and making himself a <laughs> qualified cameraman for future duties. And I guess that we can see in the distance there on court one, Stuart, who's currently playing Basilio. Yes, that's now 5-4 to Stuart. That must be now coming to its conclusion. He's shooting from corner four to the blue in front of five. He's just caught it quarter ball. But these laws are so fast, he's reached the west boundary. Yeah. May have got the wire behind hit one. Yeah, it looks like he has because he's. Andres has played halfway. Just received an update from Jonathan Powell on the scheduling. So lawn four, where we were expecting, we saw Steve Munnell warming up. We'll be commencing a match in about 15 minutes, and that match will have Aston Wade against Manuel Alvarez Sala. So as a pause here, certainly on lawn four, we'll keep you trained on lawns three and two. shouldn't call them lawns. I'm used to calling them lawns, but the court is clearly the, the proper terminology. It was clearly the yellow, but unfortunately not catching it for the ball. JP's got a fairly straightforward 
stop shot. Yeah, stop it, yes. It's a little bit far, but it's still mm. not troll. And when you talked about the, uh, your partnering in the in the uh, in the next tournament, how do you decide who you pair with? What are the sort of characteristics that make up a good pairing, for instance? Pairing. That's a interesting question. There's various good doubles pairs out there. JP and Toby have done very well together, played in the world teams back in 2020. And they won the GT Open doubles a couple of years before that. But it's down to the players who they want to play with. Yeah. I've played a lot with Stephen. Mm. Uh, every um, England match I've uh, played in, I've, I've partnered with Stephen. I was partnered with Reg last year and, w and we won. So. And do players look for matching styles and approaches to the game? Is, is there a the perfect match when it comes to stylistics? Yeah, uh, players shot selection can differ to a degree, but it's very helpful if you both agree just straight away what you want to play. Mm. There is any doubt as to what the shot should be. Aspect to the open doubles is it's a good way to warm up for events like this, where England is playing Spain or the home to nationals, and you want to get some good practice with your partner for those events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just had Toby and Louise Smith congratulating you on your performance today. Thank you, Louise. Yes. Sir. After 40 down after the doubles yesterday, to level at 7 each after round 2 today, we've done quite well. So, JP confidently leveling. runs hoop 6. Leveling that match up. <laughs> I don't know if, <laughs> if the serenading behind us is coming through on the microphone, but uh, this wedding party is now in full swing. Positional shot for Andres in front of hoop seven. About uh, two foot in front. Yeah. Our cameras are on automatic switch off after a certain period of time, so apologies for that. Andres looks to have played blue to hamper Black's hoop shot. And JP may decide to leave them as they are, but he could play the double clearance. I don't know if Yellow's hoop is open. He might just decide to hit Black. Oh. That's unlucky. That's it. One of the things about quadways is a lot bouncier than other hoops, so that might not have stayed in front otherwise. You mentioned this type of hoop. Is this something that we use more, more and more in the in Europe, for instance? I think, am I right in thinking that they're used down in the southern hemisphere a lot? Definitely. Um, I believe every event in New Zealand uses them, and the WCF ask that all of their events use them where possible. Certainly when we can get hold of ours from the CA, we use them at every event possible. And if you're doing training camps and things Certainly, like that, yes, you'll, the you'll take the squad weekends yeah. like to use them as well. Uh, 
And there's a snuggle drop, so JP's yellow, stopping either the claims or the hoop shot. Just has to play to the side, hope that Blue misses the hoop. And deal with Black later. It looks pretty square on, doesn't it, that Blue? It does look quite straight, yeah. It shouldn't be a problem. And Spanish players don't tend to hit them very hard. Aiming to get to the next hoop, but... JP's approach to hoop eight, just slightly overhead, a couple of feet shorter would have been perfect. It's just gone to the east of hoop eight. It's not in running position, but it's definitely in control <coughs> of the hoop, so difficult positional shot for Andres. He may just decide to go defend the near boundary. Now, we may have missed the fact that Stuart Smith has won his game on court one. Did we notice that? Certainly, Louise has drawn our attention to that. Yes, absolutely. You may have got some of it in the background. Thank you for that, Louise. That makes Stuart, so far, the only player to have won both matches today. Oh, right. England English team, at least. In terms of where, obviously England, top tier, Spain is also a top tier team. Yes, it? Yeah. after the <coughs> tier two last autumn, uh, beating Wales in the final, they are now in the top tier, which has been announced to be 2025, the next staging. And are there ranking points as such for matches like this that then contribute to your position in the, in the world rankings? Absolutely. Every, all the singles games go on the rankings and the country rankings are worked out based on the top six players from each country and the average of those six players. Right. And that's updated every quarter. And have there been any significant movements in those sort of lower divisions as to who's moving up the ranks, who might be threatening the, the top and the, the next tier above? The ones, the countries at the top are really New Zealand, Australia, Egypt, and England. The USA is slightly behind, and Spain is coming up as well. For me, they're the top six who will be in the next world teams at the moment, at least. And who's below them then? Who's the in the next division down? Wales are still in there. They should be the top in the next one. South Africa are still in tier one, but you know, with, with more teams coming up, it's getting harder for them to stay in. Any emerging countries that are making the, their initial mark on the game? One hears of Latvia, for instance. You see individual players, and as a country, how? Yes, there are certain individuals <coughs> from all over, and some countries like Via hosts a number of tournaments. Spain, for example, have got more players than they've enough tournaments for, so they struggle to play enough as other countries do.
is someone was mentioning earlier that they are regular visitors to, to the UK to, to participate yes, that's in true. trainings. So a quick summary of where we are on this last, not this last tube, but this new page. So black and blue are both on the south boundary. Red and yellow in front of the hoop. Now coming into the shot, looks like run straight through the middle. <coughs> there we are to see just behind JP there that Stephen and Gonzalo's match has started on court two. That's one point each at the minute. It has a habit of doing that just at the wrong minute. <laughs> if they are, uh, our camera is unattended. Meanwhile, JP runs hoop eight to level that match, at, uh, that game at four all. Richard, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I have to go, um, and I will leave you um, and Will to look after the match that's going to be on Lawn 4, Aston against Manuel. Yes, and, that's going um, start in a few minutes. I shall be following it. Yes, thank you, Eugene, for your comment. Um, you'll be relieved to know that the equipment has worked pretty well. And the operators of the equipment have sort of worked out what they're doing um, by the beginning of the day. So we've had some relatively complimentary comments on the on the production. I will leave you, Richard, and I will's going to enjoy uh, join you shortly. But um, thank you, everyone, and uh, let's do this again. If you want to turn off, you can do that. <coughs> so there we see Andres blocked JP's hoop shot with black and he's lining up the jump. The yellow. It did lift but didn't clear the black, so got a second prize. Cleared the ball. Thought he may have cleared the blue first and then jumped with red, but blue could only move the red to the south boundary. Playing the stop clearance on blue, but he says it a little bit too thin. Blue hitting the hoop, but going behind. So Andres is first back in. That must be a good shot, slightly past straight, so any clearance can't stay in front. JP Yellow is in corner three, so he may decide to play the clearance here and just go off the south boundary. That's what he's lining up.
Andres may have attempted to block the Reds close on black in that shot with blue. It's just gone foot pass. But that doesn't really matter. Good shot from JP to clear it, but blue is in position. I don't know if blue's blocked yellow's hoop shot from the boundary from here. You might fancy taking that on depending on what black does. Run the hoop from the boundary. It's a very good shot. Shot takes the lead in the game, 5-4. It's a very good position on shot with blue. Yellow's not quite gone halfway to hoop 10. JP just coming around to look at the angle blue's got at the hoop. If it can't run. I'll not bother moving it. But I think it, it must do because he's shooting at something. Must be the blue. Right, great shot. see the red with blue, fully at least. Well, you could see enough of it, but unfortunately he's moved the black as well. There's been quite a few of those shots so far today. Playing a good clearance, but moving your own ball as well. Comes down to placing it too close with a positional shot. These ones are so fast that by playing from hoop nine, it's fractions and you can't allow for to put an extra roll. Thank you. 
Andres has just run a hoop 10 to re level the game. Five each. JP's ball in it. Hoop 11 is very good. About a yard in front. JP's electing to clear black from 111. Should blue clear the red as opposed to trying to block blue on red. That's a good clearance, both balls going off the court. No, it's difficult to, to tell whether that was a, a hoop shot or just perhaps he had a double. JP has run that to about three yards south of hoop 12 to take the lead 6-5 but we're going to uh, leave that match for now as the uh, Aston against Manuel have started on court 4 <laughs> Which match are we watching? So this is Aston against Manuel. Yeah, so Manuel's just had a massive sit out, I think. I think Manuel's not played um, since this morning, about 11 o'clock. That's correct, uh, when you played him. Yeah, but it didn't look like he had much of a warm up. come out quite cold after that. Aston meanwhile has just come off that great win against Jose. Yeah, that was a bit of a topsy turvy game, right? Because he just smashed the first game. And then yeah, he did. 7-1 in the first. Lost the second 7-6. And then 7-6 final one, was it? Yeah, it, it, one. yeah mm. it was. That gives you a good view of how straight to the hoop the black is. It looks like Aston is going to be taking on the hoop drop with blue. That's a good shot. Not very far through. A little bit unfortunate, he might not have a good shot next time. Yeah, blue's looking pretty hampered there. So Red's gone about three yards in front of two, um, and Aston's just checking whether or not he can get a mallet to that blue. I don't know whether there's any scope here to sort of send black down the lawn whilst nudging blue into a clearing position. It's it's a very fine shot. Yeah, but the alternative is... I don't think the rush is on, is it? No, the hoop will be in the way for the rush, surely. I don't, you could play the, the clip, but I wouldn't 
be in great position, but you'd move blue at least. Yeah, exactly. It looks like he's just taking position and hoping Lenlor doesn't get the hoop. That's a good shot. Yeah, it's good not a shot. I don't think it's blocking though. It's not blocking the round, no. no. Slightly over approaching there. Yeah, although I'd be amazed if Aston can get a mana to this actually. Is he? He's not doing a clearance. No, just no. punting one at the lawn. Yeah. I reckon Manuel's just having the soup, you know. I think he'll just go straight through. <laughs> So, rusty commentator here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do that against me. <laughs> that would have been on the boundary in one all by now. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to notice playing Spanish is even when they've got quite a good hoop shot and yours is in an advantage position for them as well. They still elect to do the clearance and control the current hoop. He is in control though, still, right? Yellow yeah. can sneak in front yeah, here. Yeah, yellow can. Blue's a bit stuck for ideas. The blue. And Red's got a good clearance on black. Yeah. And even if blue can Thanks. get through to black. Sorry, if, even if blue can get through to red, there's nowhere Thanks. really for red to go. Blue can move anything here, is okay. Unless, mm. you know, you could. Move black and white, yellow, but it would stop red clearing it. Yeah, nice shot. But it's a seven yarder yeah. into a lot of open space, so. <laughs> but, it, you know, Askin can always clear it again. Yeah, but. Um, be trading a seven yard clearance for like a 30 yard clearance or something. It's only about 10 yards the blacks away from the yellow. And it's when Aston hits this that you think, well, why do they not just run the hoop when I had it? Yeah. Looks like it's going to be leveled off. Yeah. Reds, reds disappeared to the south boundary here, so um, so I suppose Aston's got quite an advantage at hoop three. Yeah, this is a good line. I suppose Manuel might think. I'm going to struggle to take position anyway. I may as well have a pop shot at blue, and if I end up yeah. on the boundary, fine. Exactly. And if I hit, great. It's a great shot. He might, he might even be able to see blue, in fact. Because he's on south boundary, just behind hoop four. Hoop three, maybe, in the way. Yeah, and there's that shot. Not quite. Good position for the shot last year. I don't know if the block on yellow is an option here. You always risk going a bit too close to your own ball when you play things like that. Yeah, but I, I think I was but just trying to get in position, right? And it's just yeah, finished short. Yeah, that was just position. Quite tight position, I think, but I think I'd be going a bit deeper. Yeah, I think so too. I think you sort of just go a few yards back, stay away from blue. Yeah. You may get a block on red as well. Yeah, yeah ideally. Um, the lawns have slowed down a bit since this morning and yesterday, I'd, I, I'd say. Um, but I, 
I'd say blocking is still a bit tricky. Perhaps it depends what kind of player you are, Will. If you're not as much of a touch player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how many players here this uh, weekend have been banking on the 30 yard or 20 yard blocks, but yeah. Yeah, from I've not seen the seven there. yards, you can go for them. Yeah, exactly. That's actually a really nice shot by Aston. That's a, a lovely shot. So that's gone. That's just a couple of yards from hoop four. Yeah. Slight angle, but runnable. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, we can see from the other camera, actually. It's kind of handy having that camera at the other end of the lawn. But that's runnable, right? That's it's yeah, it's definitely runnable. So that's a nice pace. That's something that I've been struggling with um, this weekend. I, either they go racing through because it's a fast lawn, or they just grovel through, or they just get rejected. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I forgot that people have been <laughs> watching my games. <laughs> <laughs> I've been smashing them through easy. <laughs> Yeah, spotting some latency. But it just makes such a huge difference. The difference between blue being there versus on the boundary just gives Aston an instant oh, yeah. advantage. I mean, I'd rather be on the boundary than just through hoop three, but that's a much better. How do I block? How do I block random here? Okay, nice. Toby's on it. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Wasn't quite close there, unusually. So, Blue did have a feasible hoop shot, right? Blue does have a hoop shot. Maybe. I mean, Black is an easier shot. I don't know wh whether he can actually get rid of all these balls. Yellow has blocked red a little bit, I think. They're all quite close together. So, the double. Maybe he looked at the uh, double clearance. Looks like you don't want to just move it. red because it'll clear black. So it looks like a hoop shot. Yeah, hoop shot now. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, shot. good hoop, well done. Nice shot. So that makes. So that makes it 3 1 to Aston. Just an update on the other matches. JP's levelled his match, one each. And Stevens' match is still only at hoop four in the first game. And Stevens leading 2 1. Yeah. So a couple of nice balls in here at hoop five. Um, uh, Manuel's clearing blue, really. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh. He's clearing blue. This is. I don't think I've seen that choice of shot before. Oh. He's got a block There's no way he's got the block, surely. Surely, if anything, you clear the black. Yeah, I mean, my, my first thought was you either put a block in or you yeah. clear black just in case. Black's not a block red soup shot, has it? I don't think so. No. But, like, if. I'm not actually sure that shot's a great idea. No, uh, you don't get yellow in front or. And it has a Make the clearance much much further for blue. Yeah, it's it's made the shot harder, but only by a couple of yards. And if Aston hits this, he's just up in hoop five, and oh, oh. I say so many times that's happened. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice shot, bad outcome. Well, yeah. o okay. Outcome. I mean, all you can do is hit the red. What happens after that is. Manuel maybe I'll get a good position here if he gets wide from blue and black. Black's only shot then would be to promote blue in front. And it's a little bit short. I think blue can see that. Yeah, you can see from there. Blue's definitely open on red. Yeah, he's not really he can't really get rid of red very far though. This should just yeah, be position. Yeah. And put black in and then 
It's always, I always think with this sort of shot, you end up running the risk that either black gets in the way, or yeah, or when you want to clear red, it, red just immediately hits black, or you have to go yeah. really deep. Yeah. It's always a bit of an awkward. If you try to put black in tight, you block blues from red. Yeah. Or again, we can hit red into black. That looks like a nice position. You just have to hit red to the boundary and hope it misses black. Yeah. Yellow looks like it might have actually blocked red shot here. I, I, I think practically that though it doesn't change much. I don't think it does, no. I mean, you may just put blue in tight in front. This looks like a snuggle, is it? going for a clearance on blue, so does that mean yellow's blocking black? I did wonder if it might be. That's why I kind of thought he might put blue in front, because then it leaves black there, and he could just play the jump shot. Uh, it looks like Aston's lining up for a jump. I'm, I'm really surprised he didn't try to interfere with black shot there. I was expecting some sort of snuggle, or just a block on the clearance, maybe. I didn't really think blue was posing that much of a threat to yellow. The jump's ballsy here, but realistically, if he clears, I think he's where going to be down. Are now. Mm. No, not quite. I think if he clears, it's going to be a long time before he gets a hoop shot, though. So, exactly, yeah. But then, you know, the shot with blue put in front, he could have cleared one of the balls mm. and got a better shot that way. Yeah, so a really nice hoop run there by Manuel. He's just sent it about a couple of yards past the peg. So yellow's got a pretty strong position at um, six already. Yeah, Aston Black's playing blue in front. It looks a little bit too hard, that one. Black's offside, but um, it looks like Manuel's leaving it there. So I wonder if Black's wide. Ah, so local knowledge on this lawn everything gets sucked into hoop six there's like a like there's a, just a general um bowl towards hoop six so stuff gets sucked in so if you go much further when than where red is now everything just goes miles and it just won't stop um yeah useful local knowledge so it wouldn't surprise me if Aston's a bit confused by blue because <laughs> Because that happened to me like five times <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah he, has, he has put black onto the west boundary. Yeah, but he's just lagging in, so... I can understand why, because yeah, Blue's not in front, he wants to put some pressure on get yeah. and get a hoop shot soon. So is Manuel just kind of in this hoop? happy for Yellow to take anything here, because... So he might miss a hoop, and if he clears the black, he just get rid of red. So what is he aiming at? Is he aiming at blue? He's aiming at blue. He's, he's aiming at blue, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised by that, actually. Maybe maybe yellow's shot was much harder than red's. I, mean, I, th I thought he might clear the black, actually, because that's... I think if you clear black, the position than blue was. Yeah, but if you clear black, then blue clears red, and you sort of just yeah. restart the whole hoop. Yeah, I. And I think Manuel It's not what I would do. Advantage. I just think that's something the Spanish players have been doing. Clearing the balls. I, in I front. don't know. All I thought Manuel do against me was just run hoops for anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, apparently you felt a bit more comfortable against me than against Aston. <laughs> was that in the first game or the second game? Uh, in the first game and the end of the second game, start of the middle game, he it's a, it's a start of the second game wasn't so great. Um, but it, but I mean, he has just had like a four-hour sit-out. I'm I'm, I'm That's staggered. True. I'm staggered that he didn't have a warm-up before this game. I, I, I can't tell from there. Is yeah, can yellow see blue? He might flick off red to hoop seven. Was black here. 
Yeah, that would be huge if he gets that. I don't think Gillow can see all of it, if any. He may just be doing this centre ball. Control the hoop. Yes. I suppose if you're if you're three two down or like four one down, maybe you want to try to string multiple hoops together, but yeah, maybe but just if you're three two up, just get the four two if up. If it, yeah, hoops. yeah, exactly. But uh, if yellow couldn't see blue, then I mm. do think it was a good option. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Nice hoop. Yep. Four two. That's quite. A, that's actually quite a huge hoop for uh, Aston because I thought I thought Manuel was miles ahead in that hoop, like two balls in front. Aston kind of far. Yeah, that's a good point. He just missed that hoop shot, didn't he? Yeah, he can hinge on that, can't he? It's a good positional shot. Obviously, red was legal, having been placed there by Aston. So yellow is far, actually. Yellow's just outside corner four. Yeah. So I wonder if Aston's going to clear this and think that yellow's it's not going to. It looks like it's lined up a positional shot. Yeah. Now yellow's lagging in. Thing is that that range, yeah, yeah, it's straight it's off. Going to go off the boundary. <laughs> so if Aston, if Aston hits this, he's looking really strong at seven and for the game. Yeah, for me, it's the black's just gone a few feet too far. Yeah, you can sort of see red careering into black after that, but he's sort of caught the angle. He's, he's got a very good angle, and actually. Red can't even get rid of black now. Not no. really. Yeah, I'm not going to say he's playing for that, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say so. So Manuel's going to clear and just try to defuse the situation. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's done nothing really. I, I mean, it's, I, it's I, a good I, shot if he can just nudge black to the side of the hoop. Yeah, I wonder and if get he was off straight, but I wonder if he was aiming a centre ball there or to the edge. I wonder if he was like. I think ball. I think you can't risk trying to clip it. I think you just got to move it back to the boundary. Wait, am I being thick? Is that actually black to play? It is, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's... That's another that's great really shot. That's really Look at that pace. Manuel's having a bit of a nightmare here. Yeah. Sometimes you can aim too close to your opponent ball. So you just stay well clear and make sure you get past it. Yeah. I don't think there's much of a turn on the line. Um, I think there is a, as, as they look at it, a right to left turn. Yeah. By maybe, maybe about a, a yard. Foot, uh, foot to a yard. I think, it, I think something like a yard. Depending um, on the pace, obviously. Yeah, I think... If you're travelling with that air slowly, it'll go about a yard. So he's forced into a shot, really. Nice shot. Great shot, yeah. I'm not actually sure. Perhaps it was a double as well. Maybe. Maybe it's frustration. I, I suppose he couldn't leave that there because black was just going to turn around and cream yellow. It's just Goodness. put the block in here, isn't it? Try and block both. Yeah, 5 2 up. You don't have to do anything fancy like clear yellow. I think you can put the block in, block the hoop. How far back? Slightly nearer yellow than blue? Uh, I'd say about a yard or two beyond blue. So maybe three yards from the hoop. Basically a hoop running position if you need it. I don't think that's a block. 
so I think Manuel's just forced for the hoop here. If he takes blue, he's going to end up with two balls behind the hoop, and he's going to have to do a lot of clearances before he gets a hoop shot anywhere near it. It may, may have blocked the hoop shot, partially at least. Come around to look at it from behind the hoop. Aston had a quick look. Jumped then. Red is just east of corner one, so if he does clear blue, he's not going to get a hoop shot for a while. Yeah. So this is hoop shot, it looks like. And hit black. Yeah. It can't have been much of the hoop you can see. Oh, six, six two. two. Six two. Cool, so we turned the mic up, so if um if we were quiet before, hopefully that sorted it, and if not, let us know. So Manuel's position shot red, a yard or so short. Yeah. And quite deep. Uh, I know yeah. the ones are quite fast, so it's not easy, but I'd go a little bit closer than that. Yellow's nice. Yellow's nice. It'll be interesting to see what red does here because he can't get rid of black. Yeah. And black needs dealing blue with. Blue should go basically just in front of yellow. Yeah, I think so too. Make blue look really dangerous. Temp black. Uh, sorry, temp red to clear blue. It's nice. And then black just goes straight through. Yeah. It looks like. Look at that. Yellow may have blocked black shot. So he could just get rid of blue and everything's fine. Mm. It's difficult to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell from these angles, isn't it? Clears black here. I always, I always think this is a borderline risky because he's just opening up a lot of lawn for yellow to be punted into. He might get fortunate or semi fortunate with where red's ended up. He might have got a block, but Aston's approaching this too quickly. There's no way red's blocked if he's approaching it this quickly. So yellow could be in corner two by the end of this shot. That's so that happens. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. That's um, one way to finish the game. So yeah. So for those who missed it, Aston went in off there. Um, it, it's a nice shot. I mean, yeah. I mean, he hit what he was going for. So, it, so it's not. The right time is he might play it if Blue wasn't in front, say. <laughs> Um, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not in that case, I don't think. He might play it, yeah. But I mean, he hit what he was aiming at, yeah. so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a massive shank that goes through the hoop there. Like, all over the penny, but I think it's I mean, goes for a ball, hits it, then it, fine. It can be annoying if you're the opponent and you see that happen, but at 60 you're down and you're likely to win anyway. Yeah. You're probably not. I think Manuel's probably a bit annoyed. Maybe but. just happy, happy to get the game over and on with the next one, perhaps. Maybe. I mean, I don't think that's how I'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, so we see Manuel having a little bit of a hit now. I, I, 
yeah, I think I think he should have had a hit before the best of three. Um, after such a long sit out, I, yeah, think, he, he, I think he should have had a ten minute warm up. We saw Mulliner practicing um, before his match yeah. for the same reason. Yeah, he had the same sit out. I I had lunch between my matches at about twenty minutes, and I did just got the pace of the lawn. Yeah, didn't bother with a hit, but I've had a few hours. Yeah. A few hours, you can get really cold, and especially if if Aston's coming in hot, then you yeah, need you, you're starting at a huge disadvantage. And if you're way way better than the other player, then maybe maybe you can cope. But if if it's going to be a close game anyway, you can't afford to sort of take the first four hoops to warm up and find yourself three one down. Uh, before you actually start playing. I mean, my opponent Gonzalo. That was his first match when I played him. I don't know if he had much of a warm up. Yeah, but um, Jonathan's been quite good about um, telling players to have a warm up if yeah if they want one before a big after a big sit out. Um, and I think the best of three format lends itself a bit better to having a bit of a five ten minute warm up beforehand um, rather than block play tournaments usually yeah I always think what players do in between the best of three games is quite interesting because if I've just won a game like that I would just be trying to trying to get Manuel back on that lawn as quickly as possible yeah. like he had a he'll be unhappy with how that game went he will be unhappy with how the game ended and um, and for me, I just want to say, well, I want him to not, feel... not have time to recover. Just yeah, just be like you. You fancy but still still on? have it in his mind while he's playing the next shot. Yeah. yeah. Whereas as Aston coming off that, I'd be like, I just smashed it. Let's get back on the lawn, keep the momentum going. Yeah. So it's interesting that Manuel sort of hanging around, ready to go. Whereas man, whereas um, Aston's the one who's gone. Unless Aston's. Well, yeah, letting him stew, but that's, <laughs> that's probably a bit cynical. There's also that side of it, but I mean, if you are the person that's come off and won, and your opponent wants a few minutes, you can't sort of be impatient to get back no. on. You've got to just you, you, take you your can't, time. As you well. can't force someone to. You can't force someone to start again. And even if you try. They'll be like, oh, I just need the gens. Oh, I left my mallet on another lawn. Or, oh, I need some water. Like, there's lots of ways to get five, ten minutes recharged between games. So, um, Chris has just posted, um, you're not, just to be clear, you're not allowed to practice between games. Is there an exception for this event? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, or at least not that we're aware of. And in fact, um, Jonathan was just calling over to Manuel saying, uh, please don't. So, yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty typical in tournament play for um, there to be no practice between games. Yeah. Best of three is normally being the exception, but even in the British Opens, um, in best of threes, there isn't usually practice after the morning match. Yeah. A decent first ball in by uh, by Manuel. Um, I'd say Black's a bit short. It's probably yes, it is. borderline runner ball, but he's going to be clearing yellow, yellow, isn't he? He's clearing uh, clearing blue, uh, red even. Well, with, with Black's clearing yellow next. Oh, I see. Assuming red doesn't run the hoop, right? He's watching it. Yes. Nice shot. He likes that. Yeah, nice shot. Now. Are you bothered about throwing black here? I think I'm putting the ball in. I think a ball in too. I make black either go for the difficult hoop, stun yellow, and then I'll say yeah. blue's got to clear red again. I think sometimes it depends on the player. Like some players right now would be fishing for form, so it'd be like, oh, I need one good shot to sort of get my confidence back. And That's true. So some people I might be going for the big I smash. I don't think this is a shot. You may not even be able to see black actually with the other. Yeah. Player. Other players just play normal, um, yeah. or even might even be timid. It might be okay between matches. Um, I think yeah. in the event uh, practice might be okay between match uh, between matches. I think in the event of a very long sit out, it's it's okay. And now now that it's put red in. I think Aston might be tempted by the hoop. 
He looks like he's going for it, right? Oh, that's a very good attempt. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how successful people have been with angled shots at hoops. Um, they seem to get rejected a lot more. So I think these it are. Depends set on the pace. Oh, that was a little bit hard. Yeah. I think I overheard the groundsman saying that these were set at 30 second, I right. think. Um, first thing in the morning, especially yesterday when the hoop holes were brand new, um, they were pretty firm, but the hoop holes have loosened up quite a lot since. Which these have been reset as well, though. But what, overnight? Uh, before this match. Oh, before this match, even? Yeah. Okay. Jonathan may have noticed me pressing them in a little bit. In my mind. Yeah, but even that hoop run, which was kind of clean, uh, we saw the hoop move quite a bit. But yeah, Manuel takes the first hoop. Um, yeah, unusually, it seems to be hitting it quite hard. A lot of Spanish tend to just sort of make sure of the hoop. Yeah. And also, it's a fast court. You don't need to hit it that hard, I don't think. <laughs> you don't need to hit it that hard, but also... Um, I think the comfortable hoop running pace for most players is taking it off the lawn if they take no wire. Cause the, like, yeah, if, if I, you don't I, take any wire anyway, it's going off the lawn. Yeah, I've been struggling to hit it at a pace where it'll stay on the lawn and go to the next hoop without compromising accuracy, at which point you may as well just smash it. <laughs> uh, that is what I would say normally as well. Yeah. This weekend I found that Perhaps because the quadra is a little bit less forgiving, just a little bit less pace, and the lawn's fast. It's generally quite a good length. Mm. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah, there's no chance of, of clearing black and moving yellow as well. There, yellow is really good. I mean, it still boils down to does red clear black. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, even if yellow had a double, you're not not going for it. You've got to no. clear with red. So blue could really complicate things here. So that's, could, that's too close to black. You, say that, you that. say that, but it I could, mean, if it hits black straight into it, it's staying there. Yeah, exactly. It could be but a monstrous double both. clearance. But I think... Oh, dear. Oh, neither. The thing is, I think if black gets cleared there, Manuel's probably running, it will run in the hoop. Like He's probably winning the hoop, so maybe blue acts as a possible break and keeps black around. No, is he really? So Aston's declining the hoop here and clearing yellow. Is he hampered on the hoop? It doesn't look like he is. He's only got the block, but... I'm stunned. Like, that looked like a really short hoop shot. But he's done that nice trick where you clear and then you block with a clearing ball. So a bit of another pressure shot. It looks like he's got something. Oh, he was going for the double clearance. Yeah, it's the only thing he had really. Yeah, mm. but the downside is is that now Aston's going to run through hoop two, level off the game, and then Manuel's going to be approaching with two balls from near hoop one. Yeah. Which Whereas if he had run the hoop with black, yellow is at two. Yeah. Quite a good approach. Then maybe mm. it's worked out. stuff for red to negotiate. There was a yellow, the peg. And it's a good length. It's a good length. It looks angled to me. This is yes, one of it's the slightly to the west. It's about three yards deep, I think. Yeah. This is one of the problems with commentating from a fixed spot, is that it can be really difficult to gauge just how angled some hoops are. Especially as an angle as well. Mm. But black's really nice. Black's lovely. Black's a big threat to the hoop. So, yeah, needs, uh, so red either needs to move it or run the hoop, but actually red can't get rid of black very far at all. 
you can't, but yellow's nice. It's as red as it looks like, it's not easy enough a hoop to leave black there. No, I think if you're playing red, you want any excuse not to take that hoop shot on. But I'm not really sure. I don't know if I bother clearing it, that's the line up the clearance. The thing is, if you centre ball this, I don't think you're actually in a better position. Not really, no, red can get rid of black further, can't yeah. it? You certainly don't want to clear your own ball. No, that's a nightmare. So I think uh, that was missed by quite a way. It must have been at least a yard out of where he wanted. Yeah, I don't think clearing his own ball would have crossed his mind there. No. So I think. <laughs> 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 oh dear. So yeah, Manuel's probably pretty relieved there because he was in a bit of a sticky situation and. Well, that doesn't doesn't actually look as angled as we thought. Good shot. Request for an update on JP's lawn. Um, JP's currently. 4 2 down. So, yeah, he's 4 2 down. Andre's leading 4 2. And. He's, in, I'd say, in control of hoop 7. Yeah, 7's kind of even on JP's lawn. Got two lawn. balls in front. He's about to be cleared on one of them, but Black's not in front. Yeah, on balance, JP's probably ahead on hoop 7. Meanwhile, Manuel ran that hoop that I said was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. It was a good shot. But I do wonder whether, if Black was actually in position, whether he would have taken that hoop shot on anyway, or whether he would have cleared... Oh, that's careless. So Richard, what would you do here? Clear, position, block? I think I would take tight position. That's good because Black that's can't see it. That's actually a really nice shot. Forces Black's hand a I little mean, bit, I feel. I mean, I don't, Black just goes in close then, Blue can get rid of red. Yellow probably shoots at Blue, but even then he uses a shot at red. Hmm. He may just take the hoop on. It looks like he's just going for the hoop. Not a great hoop. Yeah, it's a lovely shot. So that levels off the game at two all. Battle going down on lawn two. Yeah. Oh, in Mullina's game. In Mullina's game, yeah, Stephen Mullina against Gonzalo is uh, still contesting who paid. Oh. It's a nice ball in there from Manuel. Um, and just a nice ball in from Aston. So this is sort of like the set menu at hoop five. Take position, take position. Yeah. Prophylactic clear, big smash. That's my favoured sequence. Yeah. So I a lot of people prefer yeah. just to keep clearing. Yeah. With a every following shot. But I think Manuel's just shifting blue here. Nice shot. Lovely. Uh, is he going to get. Uh, so. He's sort of snuck behind hoop one a bit there. Can we see that on the camera? Probably, probably not. not. No, but I don't think it matters because Black's not going to be. Well, it might mean that he has to come back quite deep. But yeah, it all hinges on this shot now. And yeah, just we just see it is. slides by. So yeah, fairly straight hoop five. And if Manuel can run this just past the peg, then he's going to look pretty strong at hoop six straight away. See, that's hardly taken any wire at all. Yeah. Straight past hoop six. Yeah, that's 
That's actually a really nice shot. I mean, it's only just passed. It's definitely control. Let's get a good wire here with blue. Yeah, I think I think yellow's quite straight behind the hoop though, so I think Aston can get decent hoop position whilst being wide. It's a lot easier said How than done. How close do you go? A couple of yards? I'd say further. a couple of yards. I'd say a couple of yards. I don't think. I just don't think you can bank on it. It's a that bit looks pacey. like it's sailing by. Might be quite. It's quite good. It's gone a little bit deeper than we suggested. Yeah. It may be wired. It's only not full ball clearance. So on the camera we've just hopped to... We've got a slightly better view. Blue actually looks like it might be wired, yeah. That's always the danger of going past the hoop, especially if you're like directly behind the hoop rather than just at a big angle. Yeah, absolutely. Because like the person can be the best shot in the world, but if you if you stick like a lump of metal in the way, <laughs> there's just no. There's, what can they do? And that may have uh, covered anything he could see. Mm. Astrid's just playing in. Just playing in. A bit tighter. That's very tight. And again, it's really hard to tell whether that's angled or really think good. I think looking at this, that's a quite a good shot. Yeah. I think maybe he's obviously more black than blue. He's playing this kind of quickly though. Okay, so so he takes black. Suggests that blue was just wide. Is blue open? I mean, think red is blocking it. From the camera, it looks like blue might be open. I think blue can see the hook. So it's a bit of a bit of a tricky one. It's always a bit unpleasant having their ball really ready to run the hoop in front of you. Um, but it's not it's not that long a hoop shot, and you put it there. It, well, yeah. Uh, so he does a gentle clearance. I don't think Blue's got sure a hoop that's shot. That's not sure it's that good. Well, that's going to have to move red or yellow. Yeah, I think if red blocks black shot here, I just don't... Yellow's clearing blue, I think. Yeah. So okay. I I think I would have been tempted there to go quite close to the hoop. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, you didn't yeah. close to black. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got to, I think. Nice shot, yeah, but nice. it's gone level with the hoop again, so... It's level, but no, not behind. Is this a hoop shot? Surely not. This looks no. horrible. I think you just have to go deep here. It's not what, he's, not what he's lining up to do, though. Is this actually a hoop shot? I think I'd be going peg. Um, if you go peg, blue slides in front, I'm not yeah, really sure what you do. not quite that deep. Probably five. Five yards, just so that their clearances get further away as well. So the danger now is that Aston's just in full control of the hoop. Blue goes in yes. front, red has to hit. Blue goes black. wide from red. And depending on what red does, blue can flick off yellow. Deep seven. So interestingly, Manuel's clearing blue right now. I kind of thought the combo was going to be centre ball black, centre ball blue. He couldn't see all of blue, could he? I think black is a better shot. I think, yeah, I think he black is simple. He may have unluckily covered yellow's shot. Where red ends, red's ended up. Wow. So, in the background, you, pro you guys probably didn't see it, but the wind's picking up and, in fact, the flagpole's just blown over. <laughs> <laughs> so. And now the England flag's looking wobbly. Hopefully not an omen, but... <laughs> Well, the first one was a CA flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a sign next to the flagpole saying "Danger Flagpoles," uh, which I thought was a bit unnecessary, but turns out to be really quite smart of them to foresee that. There's also a sign near the netting saying something on the lines of. Um, Warning, croquet. <laughs> Please control your children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which uh, 
fast moving balls. Yeah, fast moving balls. We did have um, somebody come on from the wedding earlier onto this lawn. Uh, the sign's not 100% effective then. <laughs> I don't think they were particularly <laughs> looking at the signs. <laughs> Something to remember for next time we do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what you can see here. It might be black or red or something onto blue. Uh, is this going to be a rush? Yeah, a rush of red onto it, blue. It's always a red onto black onto blue. <laughs> I think at that point you just go halfway. <laughs> just jump them and play the blue. Oh, it is a jump. Oh, that's a great that's shot. Great. So, a few hours ago, I was in front of Hoop 13 against Manuel, <laughs> and I blocked him. I was quite pleased about it, and he did that to me. Yeah. And it sucks when it happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> it really sucks. <laughs> it wasn't uh, completely blocked, but... Because you, you were trying to block the Hoop and the ball, were you? I was just trying to do what I could. I don't, I don't think... I don't <laughs> sure, you were on the south boundary. <laughs> um, one of them was open, but he went for the jump anyway. So in JP's game versus and Andre, um, it looks like Andre's just jumped over JP's ball in the jaws. At hoop nine. At hoop nine. So Andre six, is now 6-3 six. Six, up in the third. Yeah. So that would be a huge, huge scalp for the Spanish. Meanwhile, Mullen is having a good old battle down on lawn two but um, it's coming out slightly better side of it, so it's 5-3 up in game one. Right, back to the game on this lawn. Uh, this looks like Aston's just taken position, right? But it looks like if red hits black, there's a lot of lawn to wire. There is quite a bit, isn't there? Behind. Like a nice centre board here, and black's just wired afterwards. Uh, okay. That's unfortunate, but he's moved it some distance. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. And Aston's shooting into a lot of space here. So he is, yeah. Yeah, good shot. Yeah. So, the black ball's disappeared up the lawn, but... He won't be too bothered about I that. Don't, yeah, he just needs he just needs that yellow ball gone. And I doubt that if Manuel does hit the... If he does hit the return clearance, I don't see yellow hanging around, so... No, it was a very good centre ball shot, but at the pace he's probably going to hit it. Yeah. It's going to carry on quite a bit. Yeah, even if he centre balls this, blue just comes back. And I think Aston's got... Obviously, he's, he's lost advantage. red as well. Yeah. So Aston's got a shot to level it up at three on. Yeah, it's a nice solid hoop run there. Um, and three all. And that's got a bit of legs on it. It's so just too far. Yeah. So It's not runnable, it's very difficult jaws as well. Yeah, this morning I struggled to put a ball really in position. And it just makes the game really hard. It just makes the game really hard if, when you've got first approach to the hoop, you don't yeah. get it in front. Yeah. The, the number of clearances you have to do to get back in the hoops. I think there might be a slight turn to the left on that shot from yeah. sort of level with hoop one. But that's a big let off. Like that black ball is dead weight for the next couple of shots. 
So the standard, the standard idea here is to get just keep putting balls in front of the, just keep putting balls in front of the hoop. Blue can only clear so many. Blue can only clear so many, and um, eventually you get a jump. I think. But should be clearing red, uh, yellow, isn't it? Otherwise, you just go behind yellow. Great shot. Great shot. The only problem is, blue still on the lawn. Yes, red could go perfect hoop running position. Uh, sorry, perfect jumping position yeah. now. And, and um, then where well, black can can't come through and move it. Blue. So, um, as a general atmosphere update, we thought there was going to be. A th we thought we we're in the middle of a thunderstorm because um, <laughs> currently there's some wedding photos being taken behind us, and every time the flash goes off, this <laughs> this tent gets filled with light. Um, but yeah. So the thing you must do here is not allow black to clear red. If you put it bang in front, yes. black can just go straight through, centre ball red. You need to have it slightly angled so that the uprights prevent black from just playing a clearance. Um, My, uh, it's pretty careless. Shot at, at 13 in the, in the last game. That was the first thing I looked at, and then happily that was to get the wire as well. Yeah. So is he playing the clearance? Oh, he did. Oh, and he caught that in, like, yeah, so he caught a little bit of wire, which is a danger. Yeah. Like, like you said, it might be better just tapping it through and hoping he misses the jump. So, so now we see Manuel lining up the clearance. Um, we just see that if Blue had been hit a bit harder, it's off the lawn and all's good. But instead, yeah. Blue gets punted. Oh, if he hit it thinner on the other side, anything like that. Hit it too straight, basically. And the Blues ended up on the east boundary, level with hoop 4, and red is about a yard in front of hoop 7. Yeah, it's always a danger of leaving someone just a shot into loads of space, especially at a yard or two's distance. I wouldn't say he left it, he was unlucky to finish well, like that. Yeah. But it's why everyone should hit really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was right all along. <laughs> <laughs> it's for this one situation. I mean, it, it, it's also just, because black was at the back of the hoop. Or just half ball all your clearances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you prefer, half ball or half shot? I'll take what I can get, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Asin had the tea lady there and didn't quite get it. Um, so Manuel's got a hoop shot. Takes a lot of wire. Quite a lot at that pace, it should have gone a lot further, really. Yeah, so quite a bit of wire. He's got away from the hoop at least, so he's got a clean swing down to things. But you've just seen blue roll onto the court there, that's because somebody's pushed it too far for <laughs> where it went off. That's actually quite a bit short, I'd say. So Black's yeah. taken position Black five should yards. be aiming to get further forward. Isn't it? So yeah, Black's taken position about five yards and then that's a really nice response actually by Yellow. yellow. Um, I'd be surprised, surprised if it's on the block line, but it's certainly mm -hmm. going to prey on his mind if he takes that shot on. It doesn't look like it is. Yeah. Problem is, oh, if you clear Yellow, you only have to hit it slightly off centre and you peel it. That's also in the mind sometimes. Uh, I always, I always think you're unlucky to peel, so just don't think it about is, it. It is unlucky, but I think as soon as you think about the peel, it, you just make it happen. So just don't think about it; and it doesn't. The thing is, though, blue's just not great. No, blue should not be there at all. So I'm not really sure what you do with black now. I think you've cornered if it, yourself. If he's into open on the hoop, shot. he's going for it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's a shot. It's not. It's not a bad outcome. If you can stop, drop red. 
Well, keep blue vulnerable. I guess it depends on what Manuel's thinking, because Manuel could be looking at blue licking his lips here. There's a lot of lawn on blue if you catch just a little bit of the left hand side of it. So he's centre board that. So a nice shot, but. And I think I'd prefer just to put the ball in and make pass and keep clearing. No, I, I think if you put a ball in there, you're just toast. Not not too close to black, a little bit deep than red, but no, I think I think blue could clear red with a stop shot. Black kills yellow, so just hoop over. I think if you if you catch a little bit of left hand side, uh, if you catch a little bit of the left of blue there, I think the hoop's over for you. And as soon as you hit it, Aston's going to do a shot like that. And Manuel's in the driving seat here. So update on other scores. Um, Andre wrapped up the third game against. JP 7-4. Uh, Meanwhile, Mulliner's 6-4 up down on the bottom lawn, but uh, is taking on a 20-yard shot to stay alive in it. 6-4 um, up, Stephen's probably feeling confident. So I'm not sure that was a great shot by Manuel. Um, he was going for the wire line, but he's definitely left some of the ball open. Probably, I don't think it's worth moving though. I think he's covered up the centre and the left hand side, so if black takes red, there's a good chance that black disappears off towards hoop nine. You, I think you just move it further forward, defend the side boundary. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe, maybe, maybe get wide from red, maybe go a bit Could further do. back. I um, reckon I move it sideways anyway. Yeah, what you mustn't do here is just wander in front of the hoop because you'll take your next shot from corner two. You need to um getting clear to the side boundary is just fine. Not too far up because he could cut it, but So that's a bit of a teaser by Black. I don't I don't think he's actually gained anything by going north of the hoop. Um, not really, no. But at the same time Manuel can't Manuel would need a lot of cut to get a meaningful distance on black. That's a nice shot. Um, yeah, yeah it's a little bit close to blocking his own ball. But, but there's, there's quite a nice combo here potentially, because I don't think black's threatening the hoop, so yellow's in, and then if red's feeling confident, could put a block in on black. Good length for blue from Aston on the mm, east boundary. Blue's nice. So what do you reckon? Oh, he's clearing blue. It's not a bad shout, actually. Blue stop shot is very, like, if he stop shots blue, very strong. Uh, yeah, okay, that's that's worked out okay, hasn't it? Assuming Aston doesn't try another way off. Yeah, the enough is nice if you get it. If you go for it and get it wrong, you end up with black behind the hoop. That's, that's, that's the only problem. And then yellow comes back and it's wide and blue's got too much work to do. Blue's got a lot of work anyway. Um, so yellow's... You probably just yellow's too try and block to red's hoop shot. It is, yeah. Red's too close to black. So if red can clear... Sorry, if blue can clear red and black can get a stop shot on yellow and then blue can clear red again... Um, then Aston might get a blue I, shot. I'm tempted just to put the blue in. Red is not, not an easy hoop. It might clear blue, but then you just stop yellow. Yeah. Yeah, I think if, if Aston puts the ball in, then Manuel would be probably forced to go for the hoop, but this is a clearance. It's a hoop. Oh. Wow. So there's a clearance on black. Yeah, this is it's a very good shot. So red's gone off towards nine. It's so off now south of south boundary in front of nine. So now the question is, what can black? So black is open on yellow. It's definitely open. Yeah, between the blue and the hoop, there was actually quite a lot of lawn to yeah. wire it behind. Even if Aston not a good view, yeah, if we can. that's actually a 
That's nice a really shot. good shot. That's a really good shot. He's definitely in control of the hoop now. Yeah. Yellow's Yellow's not really got any good spots. If you go close to the hoop, then blue will take you out. And if you go far from the hoop, blue sneaks in front and black clears yellow. And if you go to the side of the hoop, you sort of diffuse the whole situation, but it's not great. That looks like cannon fodder to me. Blue's just straight out of comfortable hoop running distance now, I'd say. Just a bit far, yeah. Also, yellow could clear blue. Black. Black's going to have to shoot at something. So a couple of shots ago, Aston took the hoop on in this, in a fairly similar situation. Um, I'd be surprised if he does it now. I'd, I'd say red is a sensible choice of shot here. He's going for the hoop. Yeah, this other camera's great. Good effort. Very good effort. Uh, and it looks... Has he been screwed here by the white, or is he... Uh, doesn't seem runnable. So, well, no, because if Manuel, if Manuel clears, then he's probably thinking I'll jump with red. Yeah. And if Manuel lags up then black's on the wire and helpless. Looks like a clearance. I think I'd clear blue either way. And then just take the jump. Black's probably not got a good shot to hit nine. Oh no, if, if, if black's just glued on the wire, you just take position, you don't have to do anything. Blue can only clear one ball. Yeah, but it's clearing red and then you have to make sure yellow's got a good jump shot. Yeah, but then you're asking, but then you're saying, is it easier to take position or to clear? Yeah, I think it's easier to take position. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually quite a nice clearance, but Aston's getting to this pretty quickly, so I don't think it's blocked or anything. So black's not in the jaws here, so a rush peel would be very unfortunate, I think. Uh, very unfortunate. But if it's not vulnerable, you could miss the jump but make it vulnerable. I th I'd say he'll be unfortunate if that happens. Like, you're right, if he, s if he centers the wire, then black could just bounce back half a centimetre or something and just suddenly become easy hoop run. Is this a, is this a jump shot? It will be. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, good hoop. Good hoop. And I'm not sure what kind of approach Black's got. I think he can probably go very tight to the hoop. <laughs> I think he can probably get like a yard in front, but he probably can't get three yards in front, would be my guess. Definitely not three, no. So... Is yeah, that's really tight to the hoop. Yeah, I think... He may be electing just to... <laughs> he catches a snick of the wire, so that is... That's a great if outcome. Any, if anything, he's going to go past and he's got to have good clearance on yellow this, in this direction. Yeah, instead he's got one foot position. So. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, from where he was, it's a good outcome. Yeah. Still 5-3 down, though. Yeah, but they always say... You run nine down to ten, and then suddenly it's five all, and then you're just one shot away from having the advantage. The clearance from ten to eleven is the key, yeah. Yeah. I mean, often, if you're running nine from about seven yards or six yards or something, I don't know how true it is that you run down to the next hoop. No, but uh, from where Black is. From where Black is, he's going to have an advantage at ten. If it's still there. Uh, neither of them hit. Mm. Close. Yeah, short and sweet hoop, ten, uh, hoop nine, probably.
Yeah, it's a good point, Chris. That's twice Aston's cleared with blue and left the ball on the lawn for the return clearance. Aston goes through, it looks like quite a nice pace. He's got the length right, but he's he's somehow gone about three or four yards to the right of the hoop. So he's not in hoop running position, but he's any ball that strays in front of that hoop is going yeah. to get cleared. Yeah, probably. the yellow's a little bit short. Perhaps intentionally. Yeah, that Just must to be not be too close to, too close to black. But blue can go close here, and then... Yes, yeah, it's, it's tricky to know what to do with yellow, really, because yeah, you can't hide blue's black. that far, black's that far out. Yeah, I think I think he's just got to hope that black doesn't make great contact with yellow, and that he's he's got a fairly short return clearance. I mean, you could decide to clear red instead, and let yellow have a shot. Yeah, he's thinking about that, isn't he? And that looks like what he's doing. So if he centre balls this nicely, black hangs around, he's going to end up with two balls in front. The only danger I... Oh, the only danger is hitting the blue as well. And actually, depending on <sighs> how depending on how Manuel's feeling, I guess on camera two, on camera two we can see um, the alternative view. And we can see that red's just I'm, gone a few I yards know in front. Manuel is leading, but I'd begin for the hoop there, because red has gone really nicely in front of hoop 11. Yeah. I, I really think if you're feeling confident, you ping that through and say this is a hoop. Sorry, this is a this is the game basically. Yeah. Yellow goes through, red goes three through. Three shots, you could win the game. Two. Well, well one yeah, from, yeah. One from Aston as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're both right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is clearing yellow. I'm actually quite hard there. Yeah, I'm actually. A bit surprised by I think you clear with black don't you yeah I'm a bit surprised by both those choices I I think I think Manuel's choice was a sensible choice but I just for me I'll be looking at it thinking this is a chance to wrap up this game um, without loads of risk um, obviously he's looking to get red wide from blue here but mm. Yeah, he's black still got the clearance. Yeah, the issue with black though is that if he centres red and he doesn't go off the lawn. Yeah, same again. Then yellow comes into position. If he gets wide from blue, great. And then red's clearing black into a lot of space. And if black clears hard, so he does go off the lawn, there's a good chance that he goes off the north boundary as well. And then you've got scope to wire the ball, both balls. I'm assuming from that choice of shot that blue can see red. Or certainly before the black played. I don't know if that's covered it. I don't know. Black's certainly gone too far. It can't run the hoop. Black's gone too far, yeah. More local knowledge. There is a hill <laughs> at Hoop 13 that goes from, um, as we look at it, left to right. So I don't know whether it also goes towards the hoop, but certainly if you if you approach it, it'll add about a foot to the left right the Mulliner game is six all, six all. right um, and hoop 13 looks equal meanwhile Aston I'm assuming he's shot at red missed it is black screwed for 11 it's, it's a hard good to question tell. I think it's just enough this side I think it's just enough south of the hoop that it. Okay, so I don't think that matters anymore. Yeah, it could be perfect position for dealing with red. Yeah. So we're not sponsored by this um, camera thing that keeps popping up. It's just that it yeah. seems like if, uh, if nothing happens to the camera for a while, it goes to sleep for a moment, and someone has to press something so um yeah yeah he's lost black not sponsored 
Obviously, red, yellow runs the hoop, black's okay, it would be 11. 6 4, though, it's huge. Um, and Aston's way down near corner 4, so. Oh, that's really careless. Oh. I'm not even sure that was close to running the hoop, to be honest. No, I mean. That's just. I think that was really timid and. It isn't a bad outcome, I'd positionally. But it's not great for confidence in, I'd, I'd in, in Aston's as well. Aston won't like seeing know. that miss. I don't know. I, I... I mean, it can work out better. Black can come back from move eleven. Yellow clears blue. I, I, I don't. I don't think black being there is actually that big a deal. Um, I think blue being in near corner four is a huge issue for Aston there. I think if Manuel runs that, well, from corner four. Over, well, it was, it was sort of level with hoop four. It was just a straight shot hoop eleven. It's more pace than the line as well. If he was that side, it'd be harder. But if nothing else, like it's just a chance to close out the hoop, go six four up, and Absolutely. actually, it's, he's got to do a nice clearance here on blue probably and then risk the return clearance by Aston, so he was just almost done and dusted for the game and now he's got some nervy clearances. Even if he ends up winning the hoop, it's more shots that he didn't need to play. Yeah, so he is going for the clearance. And that's a nice shot, that's a nice shot, gets it's a lot of distance shot. on the blue. Blue goes past hoop four. Not quite at the south boundary. Um, I think you can see red past the black. I think he'll be unfortunate if he's wired by the hoop or by the ball. Yeah, he's bringing it on. He's not taking that much time about it, so I think he's just open. Contact, not happy. Nails red. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> Ooh, oh, but oh, he scuffed it. He's saying he's caught the grass. Oh, no, no, yeah, he has, but off the lawn. Just off the lawn. So, unusual golf croquet rule. Um, lawn damage caused by the mallet is a fault, but not if it's off the lawn. So, Bringing it in that's like six inches it can sometimes screw you in those <laughs> situations, but yeah, you scuff a lawn there, but you won't mind about the outcome. In the Manana game, we have a shot at hoop 13 um, by the Spanish. And another one. And it just goes straight through. So actually, so, Monona, having been in a fairly commanding position, yeah. um, loses that game. Um, was he playing Gonzalo? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Gonz so first game. So Gonzalez takes the first game 7-6, and he's pretty happy about it. And no wonder, because he was well behind. So that's a great comeback. Meanwhile, meanwhile Manuel mm -hmm. misses his long-range clearance. And Aston's got a straightforward hoop to close out this hoop. And level. And this is five all. Five all. And Manuel's kicking himself probably. Like, yeah. Th this should have been his hoop like two or three times over. Yeah. He had one attempt and missed. He should have gone when Red is in front of eleven. Well, yeah, because he had. I mean, he ended up getting quite an easy hoop shot after declining that um, longer hoop shot. Oh. So red is close, black is close. I don't think black's got scope to hang around and hold hoop position, but if black centre balls this, Aston's in huge, yeah, great shot. So black can't run the hoop, but any ball straying anywhere near that hoop is just going to get destroyed by black. So blue can sidle in and... Yellow's a bit close to black. And yellow's just bad. Like, yeah. yeah. It's not even runnable. Yellow's gone. Yeah. 
yellow's past the hoop and very close to black. So red is good. Be interesting to see what he does with the yellow here. If he punts it to the north boundary, Manuel will have a 10 yard return clearance maybe. I, he should be looking to do those really. Um, and into a lot of space and probably a lot of lawn to wire in. If Aston wants to be courageous, he could try like a snuggle and just completely <laughs> hamper yellow. I don't think that's his sort of. That's a nice shot. So he gets maximum distance on yellow and sidles black into position, which is a nice backup. Potentially red's blocking black, actually. Can we see from the other camera? I mean, black's blocking red. Black's blocking red, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, it certainly is not helped red approach to 12. If it was to miss blue and blue around the hoop. That's true. So Manuel really needs to get this, really. Because um, it could be... Yeah, because blue's likely to run up to 12. If red's hampered... Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. Really well done. Where is the cue ball going, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yellow's gone past halfway to 12. I don't think... Is red open? I'll certainly be tempted by the jump. I so so from camera two as it appears on our screen on or your screens at home, it looks like there's a fair bit of distance between red and black. So yeah, even if it is a, couple of, a foot or so, yeah, I think clearing black's not enough for red. I suspect Aston's going in position. Is that halfway or it, position? I think maybe Hoop Eleven is covering the clearance. Oh, so this is where. This is where you end up with like a devil on your salt shoulder saying, clear, 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 you're going to shank the hoop. No, he's just got to run this to the next hoop. Oh, he's open, is he? Okay. As it happens, blue is pegged yellow. Is that good? If, well, if red was in front of 12, he might be tempted by clearing blue. Oh, I see, okay. As it turns out, red has ran um, 11 and gone just past hoop 12, so there's probably some scope for wiring shenanigans. But he's not got the wire, he's just gone in front, and I think that's a that's careless position, I think. I think that's a bit more angled than it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, red can clear black. So Let's have a look blue, at this view. if it's blocking, oh, look at that for camera work. This might be an edge. The yeah. crazy thing is here, is that if you go for the half of black you can see, and you actually end up snicking blue, <laughs> you're cut rushing it straight to 13. It, well, yeah. The, the scope here for an absolute disaster by Manuel. Like if he half balls blue, he could chip it straight to 13. <laughs> the alternative is, maybe the other side of blue, get red to 13. Just, just centre ball blue. Get rid of blue and hope black misses. Potentially, yeah. Looks, looks like he's. Is he lining up blue? Okay, so he went for the centre ball clearance, maybe hoping that red into Maybe you might get blue onto black. Yeah. Or, or red onto black, or red stops dead and blocks everything. So the score here is 6-5 um, to Spain, so Manuel's leading 6-5, but Aston's got clear advantage at 12. Yeah, nice hoop run, and doesn't needlessly add 10 yards to his clearance that he's about to have to do. <laughs> so, Blue's out of shot, but Blue is on the north boundary near hoop mm -hmm. 2. Yeah. So... Um, a similar shot that you might have if you've just approached hoop three. Um, uh, yeah, it's just reapproaching as her 
spectator crosses the line. Four yards, yeah. slightly angled. Three to four, angled. So, okay. It's not really the shot you want to close out a game with, but it looks like As is Aston clearing. Is it a line up Aston's clearing? clearing. Yeah. So the disadvantage of Blue being over there is if he shoots and misses, he ends up in a non hoop running position. Yeah. If you're shot with black, it'd be on the north boundary. Yeah. So you're shooting through into position. And half yeah, falls wrong, there. Not so a great side. So yellow's been taken to the boundary and blue's sort of disappeared to the east boundary. And now it's probably okay. It's a bit a bit of a weird one actually. It's right. and it depends where red goes, if black can hide behind red. Have a lawns change with the rain. I think they've slowed down a lot since yesterday. Yesterday was scorching <laughs> hot. Like just, just yeah. They certainly got wetter. That's true. Um, yesterday was scorching hot, and the lawns were a bit fast. Um, and today has actually been quite a nice day, um, yeah. even though it's been raining for a lot of it. It's, it's just been quite nice croquet weather. I'd say yeah. the lawns got a bit slower. Yeah. I, they didn't but get so. We're, we're not not really slow. They're, they're not quite a nice pace. Yeah, I'd say the fast side of easy. Yeah. This is a clearance on red, I think. Maybe just fast. So black shoots through and misses red. The thing is, is that actually blue's got quite a good clearance line on red. Yeah. And black's got a seven yarder, which is red. If you get to have it at thirty, it's a little bit angled. Yeah, from here it looks really angled, but um, certainly not straight. But Aston took a shot at it, so it must it must have. He maybe just thought, oh, he's getting off the boundary anyway. But yeah, but if it's if it's like really angled, you just think, oh, if I sent a ball out, he's just got a straight seven yarder rather than some yeah. no hoper angled hoop. But if he puts black in, and that's not, the red yellow's probably going to clear black because if red blue's getting rid of red. Yeah. So off the boundary is probably not bad anyway. In the background, you can probably see players in their finery. Big dinner tonight. Big dinner. It's going to be good. Steven's still got two games to play. <laughs> <laughs> He'd better have two games to play. <laughs> <laughs> nice ball in by yellow. I reckon that's probably blocking black. Black's hoop shot. Doesn't look like it's blocking blue. Is it, it again? Ideally, other side would have been better. Yeah, I guess so much boils down to whether Black's actually got a hoop shot. Uh, yeah. Hoop thirteen, I always think. Yeah. If oh, you, you want get a hoop shot? Oh, yeah, fair fair enough. Shot. Not sorry, not trying to block anything there. Just put ball in. So if it's open, you're just having the hoop, right? Yeah, definitely. If it's, it's two blocked, balls in front and the blue's on the west boundary. If it's blocked, are you having the jump? I uh, think so. I think red runs as well, so clearing yellow doesn't help. Is he? He's inching forward. Is he's, he? this, uh, this looks like a jump. It looks right? like a jump. He's put his hands about a few inches down the mallet. Inch forward, so hit, over hit the down and hard. Should go through. height not the direction no so seven yard hoop runs are tricky and doing them airborne is trickier mm -hmm. so yeah so busy in the comments what does he think to that well done Manuel so the bad news for England is that Manuel takes this the good news for you guys at home is you get another it's hour of what? Well, croquet about an hour about an hour. We've got dinner soon. We've got dinner in 52 minutes, actually. So, yeah, we're going in 52 minutes. <laughs> so 
cost one game each. Yeah, it's interesting because Manuel just really didn't have much of a say over the first game. Like no, Aston he wasn't, him wasn't hitting a lot. Aston played well. I don't think Aston played any worse in that game. A couple of shots I wondered. I think Manuel was a lot better in the second yeah. game. Um, yeah, basically. Bit of a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna mute the mic for a minute. <laughs> Just see. So overall match score. Um, actually, what is the match score now that JP's game is finished, and the Spanish took it? Are, are we eight all now or something? It was. It was seven each. Seven. It's uh, okay. And I think then we went eight seven up England. Um. I think it is eight all. Uh, yeah, Stuart won and Andres won. Yeah, pretty even. So, so far Spain's had the better of the doubles and England's had the better of the singles. So what we're just looking at here is Stephen's match with Gonzalo. Stephen lost the first 7-6, but it's one each in game two. Stephen just played over to hoop three. Looks to be decent position. Hit that on. Seems pretty great. Second ball in as well. We just got Jose walking in between us in the the match.
So it comes down like shooting with yellow as well. Yes, good shot. So a couple of missed clearances, Stephen Lutz in control to take a 2-1 lead. Yeah, Stephen had a really short and sweet first match today. Um, That's true, he did. And he was looking on course to have a straightforward game one, I thought, in this, but yeah, nicely actually down this to match is taking a little while. Towards eight four. he's going to go slightly past. Actually, I think Stephen's oh, near on that. I think he's hit the hoop. Uh-oh. Can't tell from here if it's in front or it's bounced to the side, but he's approaching it from an angle, so maybe it's wired. The uh, sorry, no, maybe it's quite angle. The hoop certainly stopped the blue in its track, so it's he's in control certainly. Yeah. No, a really nice hoop run from Stephen. So Aston and Manuel are wandering back onto yep. the lawn. Um, You're going to be late to do this. Yeah. Well, Stephen is if he. Wins this game. So Manuel won the last game, so it's Aston to kick off in this game. Um, interesting idea or whatever. Uh, Spain's Spain's colours are red and yellow, and um, quite a lot of players have been winning the toss and then taking red and yellow. <laughs> um, Technically, that's not allowed by the rules, but I thought it was quite nice in a way. What do you uh, mean? So they win the toss, but they let you play first? Or no, play, no, no, play with no. Red? They, they, the, the first ball they play is red. So, so like for the first however many matches, um, Spain were playing red and yellow pretty much on every lawn, whether they won the toss or not. Hmm. Um, I, I think it was kind of nice, um, and probably a bit unique to Spain. Um, They're allowed to let you play blue first. Yeah, in in the end, um, I think in the end, re uh, Francis, point, uh, Francis, a referee of tournament, pointed out, you either play first as blue or you play second as red. That's your choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one. So the blacks just come up a bit short. Yeah. Good. And blue. I don't think it's block yellow clearance either. No. So. But it is a long clearance for yellow. Yeah. But yeah, ordinarily. Blue obviously came this side of the hoop to leave the block. Watching it. Great shot. Yeah, great shot by Manuel there. So ordinarily, 
you know, you hit that shot and actually you're still at quite a disadvantage because black's in position to run. Yeah, black, black, if black was in position, which it should be, just clears 70 yarder. Yeah. He still needs to which clear. is why I would normally clear with the first ball if it's a good hit running position. Drop. Yeah, I was thinking about this recently. Like, normally the doctrine seems to be if you're a really good shot, only clear with the second ball and take position with the first one and if you're uh, less false if I ever do that because it's in the middle you've got yeah. more on to clear to but I've, I've been thinking more and more recently that actually if you're a good shot clearing with the first ball is actually quite powerful yeah because then it can clear back the next yeah. one after position with the second ball yeah so I'm beginning to think that you should just clear well People always say two shots at it. I think that's a bit pessimistic because it presumes yeah. that you're going to miss it, the first. If you, and if you do miss the first one, you may be better off putting a ball in. Yeah, it seems counterintuitive, but yeah, recently I've been thinking it more and more. Although, Ian, if he misses the first one, he goes halfway. Who? Burridge. If he misses the first clearance, he goes halfway with the next ball. Yeah, but if he's the only player doing it, I don't know what that says about it, that choice of shot. <laughs> There's a lot of players that are they're the only ones that play certain shots. Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> probably the shots they should look at. <laughs> <laughs> so, interesting clearance there by Aston. Well, it wasn't very full-blooded, but... I think it was kind of effective. Gets red away from the hoop and Black's in quite a commanding position there. Not not really threatening the hoop, but threatening a big clearance. And it kind of means that Red needs to deal with this blue right now. Yeah, he, there's a good spot where you can block blue's hoop and Black's clearance. But you might find that's too precise a shot. Rather than just clear blue. Yeah. So that clearance, he was going for the other side, I'm sure of it. Oh, definitely. Certainly stand the ball, at least. Mm. But Blue's better than it was. Oh, Aston. Aston's just cut so. the yellow. I think it's on the wire. I don't think it runs, but, you know, Jaws is very powerful. No, it, he didn't just run that, did he? That's it, a waste. Uh, There's no way you should run that. No. You, jaw, you jaws that. The only reason you don't run Blue. that is if you're you're playing a croquet god who's going to jump from seven yards over and over. Blue's and over on again. the south boundary. Black's on the east boundary. You can't put yellow through there. I mean, that's just that's just conceding all is advantage that? at two. Yeah, I don't even know if yellow can do anything at two. Yellow can probably get a ball down, but I'm. And he's just leaving blue there. He's pushing red in. I'm staggered he took that hoop shot. I'm, it's I'm really going staggered. too far. I mean, if you draws to it one and then blue jumped it, you'd think, why don't I just run it? But it's yeah, still the right shot to draws it. Listen, if, if, if you think that your opponent can reliably jump from seven yards, you are screwed. <laughs> what can yeah. you do? What do you do at hoop one? Is there three, anybody that you would say is reliable? Seven. Can do it quite often, maybe, but reliable? No, there's no. no. There's there's no one there's no one who I, I'd say ten percent is probably realistic for some of the better jumpers maybe twenty at an absolute push. You did a good one earlier. Yeah, just one though. <laughs> um, when JP had a go the shot before, like they're not they're not run of the mill shots. Um, like it sucks if it happens against you, but. That was a very good effort. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually sure he hit the wrong part of the hoop there. That looked like it was going through. Sometimes you only have to take a m tiny amount of wire and it rattles. And looking at that, he's wide blue on red, so black's shooting.
that's a great shot. Yeah, that is nice. And yellow's in that classic. Yellow can't really off. go anywhere. Yeah. Black can't move it very far, I suppose, but. And he might have wide blue. That's probably as good as he could have done. Yeah, I suppose you need to just. You need to give red time to get back in the hoop here. So you just take it on the chin, that red, that yellow's going to get cleared. Red comes back. Red, and yellow gets rid of blue. That. Yeah, that's probably plan A for Manuel. As long as red is a good shot, which it looks like it will be. Yeah, it's thread of the needle. Yeah, it's thread of the needle that's really nice. well. Yeah, yeah, so we see that red's got quite a nice hoop shot there, to be honest. Yep, so black clears yellow. I don't think he's got the wire. No, yellow can still see blue. It's not it's not a straightforward shot, but absolutely not. But if he catches it anywhere near the centre, then blue's travelling a long way. So it's one of these that's yeah. like if it's hard enough, even a thin cut would do. Yeah, that is one thing about these very fast lawns is that you you actually don't need to catch much of the ball at all to move it a significant amount. Yeah, great shot. Great shot. Great shot. Is he going behind hoop one? Is he getting lucky with a hoop? No, I can see uh, it. So the hoops, yeah. It's just... Blue's hit hoop one and gone to the side, so he's open on red. Yeah. Interestingly, yellow's approach to hoop three might be covered by the peg. Yeah, that's a good spot, isn't it? He might be I think he can go past it on the left. If, if Aston's got first but approach to three, he might not be able to clear it. Yeah. If he gets a good black. Ooh, close. But I think for 2 0, you just have red and don't worry too much about oh, yellow. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 2 0 is much better than worrying about yellow. And actually, the, if you faff around with red, you're going to get cleared. Like yeah. red, the red's yeah. got a hoop shot, and that's it. It's just, I mean, obviously he wants this just through or at the boundary, so blue can't clear it. I'm not really sure. If he, if he was to go halfway through and black was wide from yellow... What, you would take the clearance? Oh, OK. I always think those clearances are a bit overhyped. I, yeah, I don't know whether it materially changes the clearance and then... Blue's always lost, but Black's approach there is. Yeah, I don't know if just hoop, red, hoop two or red were in the way at all, but it's not far enough either way. Well, if they're if they're really in the way, you can always just smash it off a boundary like Yellow's yeah. just done. Like it's not ideal, but just give yourself a hoop shot, give yourself some control. Black there gives Manuel plenty of time to get stuck into this hoop. And actually, I'm not short sure as Blue's well. good either. Manuel just checking the hoop shot that Black's got. I'm guessing Red's just going a couple of yards in front. I would have thought so. Probably hidden from Black. Yeah. Might be good. Well, even if it's not, force Aston to choose something. Like, do I go for the speculative hoop shot? And risk being cleared that's a good off. Shot. Oh, that's a great shot. That's just exactly where you pick it up and put it ready. So Aston's now being punished quite hard for the misapproach. Um, yeah, and if, if he can't see Red, I don't know if he can. Yellow's all over blue. Yeah, this is just a classic situation for for misapproaching. Um, Aston now either has to take this horrible hoop shot on. I think he can see red. Yeah, red and lever. Yeah, but then yellow has a speculative shot. Great shot. Lovely shot. But Manuel gets a hoop shot for free, really, if he wants it. Yeah. There's nothing going in, he's just going to be cleared. Meanwhile, uh, Stephen is... 3-2 up in the second game, so pretty even. Some sort of replacement of ball, so maybe he's just played the wrong ball, I don't know. Yeah, Stevens 3-2 up, and he looks in firm control of the of hoop six. And Manuel just plays a great shot. Um, I don't know if we can see on one of the cameras, but given that he's ran it from seven yards, the pace he got on that is brilliant. He's gone a few yards in front of hoop four, maybe a bit angled, but... Um, 
really nice, really nice shot. Yeah, it's a little bit to the west. Probably not taking a hoof on, but yeah. obviously can't do much with blue. Well, I think Aston did the right thing there. Stick yeah. stick blue somewhere yeah. where yellow can't Quite just ignore straight. it. Can't cut it to the corner or wide or anything. Yeah. Um, Good red. A red to me looks a bit far. I think it's a bit too angled. Slightly to be angled, a but, but I think it's runnable. On camera two, look. we can see actually. Yeah, I, th quite I, I angled, think it's but close runnable. enough to run be runnable, yeah. Yeah, so he's checking it now, that's wise, before committing to a strategy. Well, you've got to colour blue either way, really. Yes. So we've got a guest speaker. Hola, muy buenas noches. ¿Qué tal? Soy José Álvarez Sala. Voy a comentar un poco los... Durante un, unos minutos voy a comentar en español para todos esos españoles que están ahí en online. Tenemos a Manuel ganando ya 3-0, posibilidad de cuarto aro. Y en el campo número 2, Gonzalo ha ganado el primer set y va 3-2, perdiendo en el segundo set. 4-0 para, para Manuel en el tercer y, y definitivo partido. Buena colocación de Aston. Buena bola de Manuel. Pretende quitar la negra con la roja. Mañana va a ser un día de, de mucha emoción. Hay que desempatar. Esto va a acabar hoy muy, muy igualado. Mañana va a haber que desempatar. Se pasa el azul. El otro partido, 3-2 a favor de Steven Molinas. Buena, buen golpe de Manu. Muy buena barrida. La toca bien, buen golpe, lo que pasa es que la amarilla queda muy cerca, el azul tiene fácil un, un stop shot. So yeah, just updating the scores there. Um, so Manuel's taken quite a strong lead in this, 4-0 up. Um, meanwhile, Stephen down on lawn two is 4-2 up, so um, 
but of course Stephen's only in his second game and is a game down, so it could be a late finish for him. So all the balls have returned in front of the hoop, and now it's basically a question of it's does Aston, black. yeah, does Aston hit the shot? So in a way, it's as though the hoop's just restarted again. Yeah, right? this looks a lot like. Black's kind of just running it for, although it's it's in corner four. Yeah, and it's a sort of if he hits the shot, then Aston's winning the hoop, and if he misses, if he misses it, yellow. He may even hit red. Yeah, that'd be an interesting turn at the end, but great shot, great shot, yeah, great shot. There's always scope for a big turnaround in the middle of the lawn, I think. Hoops four, five, six, seven, I think, can be strung together really quite easily. Yeah, because Because those clearances it are quite short. three in that as well, actually. Sorry? Include the hoop three in that. Yeah. But I always think you can be an eight, you know. three nil down and quite easily go from that to oh, four, yeah. three yeah. up. Um, and that's a key shot in there, that big clearance. Well, that... So just snicks it, but on these lawns enough to shift it. Still up and on the hoop though, so that's what he's going for, I reckon. Yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one, isn't it? Like, if you clear red, the chances of controlling the hoop, red just comes back in. Yeah, red looks too juicy to be left there, but in reality, as soon as you hit red, blue goes past the hoop. Red gets wide on blue, yeah. and actually in a shot's time, you're dead. Um, so you're, you're kind of forced in a way to go for the hoop, even though you'd really rather not. So I reckon Aston's going for the hoop here. About five yards? More. Six. Yeah. Oh. Good effort. But it's not there. Yeah, it's just lost a bit of rhythm. Manuel's playing an awful lot better than in the first game as well. Like, yeah. He's just, just playing well. I think Aston got punished quite hard at hoop three for misapproaches, and that's not great. No, it's not. It's not great, but the reality is, if you're if you're four nil up, you're happy to trade hoops. Mm. So you go four nil to five one to six two, you've won. You know. Yeah. Aston's approaching from corner two. If he gets a good shot here, he might clear red with blue, but he might decide red is hampered enough as it is. Especially if red can't see black. Yeah, I think red's not really got much between the hoop on the backswing and probably the peg in the way. I don't think it's going to be much more than a hit and hope probably just lag it down the lawn and hope it interferes with black I don't know if Manuel's looked at red. Could be clearing with yellow, I think. But like so you said. Local knowledge again, it's re there's just a big hill that sucks it down towards hoop six there. So if you try to take position close to hoop six, you'll just go past. Quite a, an aggressive shot here. I think if red can't do anything with black, I'd be shooting at yellow there. With red? No, blue, shoot at yellow to get off to hoop seven. If you miss it, you, if you miss it, you're probably still on yeah. side. So these are the sort of things you have to think about when you're five nil down, because you can't just be satisfied with a single hoop. Ooh. Oh, great Ooh. shot. <laughs> I'm actually staggered that was on. But <laughs> I think wow. blue, blue blocked the black, but left the hoop open. But how was the hoop not on his backswing? That's amazing. That's amazing. We need an action replay facility. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, we don't have any replay. So Manuel's just cruised to six nil up. Um. JP's going to get wet now. <laughs> <laughs> JP, for context, is um, manning the camera, and it started raining. <laughs> <laughs> Context is needed given that. <laughs> 
So, so both black and yellow, pretty good shots. Aston shooting it yellow. Oh, he's hit the wrong side of it. He's hit the wrong side. That's the first clearance he does hit, he's hit the wrong side. It's, oh, I um, think I'd better put the blue in and make the red clear the black. You can go for the block as well. I think I should zoom in on JP here to see how happy he is. <laughs> <laughs> So man man needs to deal with this black, but yeah, if Aston had caught the other side of it, then Aston's just way ahead. But yeah, you can see that man was just in his groove now. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's hitting balls much more confident. The only thing that can go wrong at this hoop is the pressure of a whitewash. Yeah, some people get pressured by it. Some people live for it. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're um, if you're really feeling confident in your shots, we you, chances are you're going to get it. He probably has to start playing well, really. Y yeah. So often, though, if, if someone is comfortably up and they end up losing 7-1, the one they get... Sorry, if, if someone ends up winning 7-1, quite often the one that they lose is hoop 7. It's always a bit of a weird one. No, oh, wow. Good shot. So... Manuel is a really good player. <laughs> just just beat Aston yeah, seven nil. Um, I doubt there's many people who can have that as a claim to fame. But that's it's quite a turnaround because in game one, uh, Manuel just really wasn't firing on any cylinders. But yeah, um, it's it's always a bit tricky when you're way down because you can't be satisfied with I'll take this hoop and worry about the next hoop when it comes like you end up having to distort your tactics so much and just... yeah so it's quite often 4-0 can snowball really quickly but uh, yeah Manuel's a pretty good player and um So, the online dashboard is saying that we've done eight and a half hours of streaming today, um, which for the tech guys around um, is 486 gigabytes of data. So, um, yeah, if so, it's a lot. Uh, also, there's no more games um, scheduled to go on Lawn Four. There's only one match still going. That's Stephen and Gonzalo. Yeah, and, and that's quite be... far. It looks to be is that five all. It is five all, yeah. In game two, Stephen looks to be in control. Yeah. So we'll be wrapping up the commentary pretty shortly, I'd say. Um, we could try, we could try commentating Stephen's match from quite some distance, but I, I think actually, I thought judging we're a little from, bit too far away to give yeah, it. Yeah, and we, we won't really be able to see what's going on, and the camera. I don't think can pick out the ball. So um, we'll leave you by saying that Stephen is 5 all, and the match I think is now is Spain now ahead. Spain now ahead 9-8. Nine 9-8 eight. Nine eight with just that one match to play. Yeah. So tomorrow um, tomorrow we're starting bright and early. 9 10 o'clock. 10 10 o'clock. So a later, start later start tomorrow. But um, there's some exciting doubles on lawn four. So on the commentary lawn tomorrow, it's oh good it's lord, it's self, me. It's elf and so um, JP Manuel and Andres. So tune in for another rusty morning, Will, and um, JP looking for revenge on anyone he can find. <laughs> so in fact, here's JP himself, best dressed man around. Um, but we'll we'll get off before he can say anything. So yeah, have a good evening, guys, and we'll see you in the morning. Thanks.